you. Uh, so we will convene the meeting and have roll call. Director Smallman? Here. Director Pulse? Here. Director Swan? Here. President Henry? Here. Okay. Is Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? The staff has no. Okay. So oral communications. You may have uh, five minutes to talk about things pertaining to our area or jurisdiction uh, that's not on the agenda. So, uh, Chris? Oh, hi. Chris put her hand up first. Yeah, I know. Ladies <laughs> first. <laughs> okay, Rick, I'll let you talk. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I recently received a notification from the County of Santa Cruz of a meeting of the Integrated Pest Management Group. On its April 30th agenda uh, is an item for applying for an exemption to use glyphosate on the Felton Library site. This exemption should be denied. The Water Department should do all it can to stop this use. The Water Department granted the Felton Library an easement from its Kirby property about two years ago. Our district has banned the use of glyphosate on district properties. Thank you. The water district should have some legal authority to prevent the county and library from using a banned pesticide on property we now allow them to use. If you had a neighbor that you gave some, the use of some land and they went ahead and used a known probable human carcinogen on that property, you probably wouldn't consider them a good neighbor. I like libraries and I like good neighbors. They should stop trying to get an exemption to use glyphosate or any other poisons at the Felton Library. This is not on a roadside or on a remote watershed. This is in downtown Fel Felton, a nature discovery park next to Bull Creek, where the library is inviting children to come and explore. It boggles the mind that anyone would want to clean up an area for a nature educational park by putting poisonous poisons on that same area. This is not the right message for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris, did you want to say something? I do. Thank you. He took all your words? <laughs> I, I support what he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You. Yeah. Well, yeah, Nick. you. <laughs> okay. Nick McCarry from Ben Lillian. Uh I'm a really terrible public speaker, so I took the time to write everything down and clocked it at 2 minutes and 45 seconds, thinking it would be three. So, excuse me for reading while I talk. As a parent and an environmentalist, I'm pro-education. But education, even of the environment and of our watershed, falls clearly under the purview of schools, or could be done by community groups such as the Valley Women's Club. If the Valley Women's Club apparently is so concerned about watershed education, why don't they spend a bit of the millions they get for free from taxpayers on this? The fact is, ratepayers should only be billed for costs related to providing them water. That's easy to understand. I applaud the directors for standing strong for ratepayers' rights to keep costs down. And I mean that. I think a lot of people will appreciate that. Everybody will. And that brings me to Director Margaret Bruce, whom I watched aghast at a time of debt and crisis for this water district, give away over 14,000 of ratepayers' dollars to her old friends at Ecology Action for simply a one-day seminar on how to save water. Those 14,000 bucks could have went to more low-flow toilets for hundreds of ratepayers instead with very measurable effect. But this so-called educational seminar for $14,000 gifted to Ecology Action had no real measurable effect and only a few folks attended. I ask the board to not repeat Margaret Bruce's freebie giveaways of the past. You are a water district, not a school district, and not a bank. That's obvious. But some people want you to do the work of a school district. Has anyone noticed the weather seemed a bit queer today? Does that mean, saying that mean I'm homophobe? Absolutely not. Just look in Webster's Dictionary, which I've brought. The word queer means unusual, questionable, or suspicious as its primary definition. Another fact is the word gay in Webster's Dictionary means, as its primary definition, keenly alive or exuberant. 
So from the facts of what happened regarding Director Smolin, it's clear that he was prodded by someone saying something intentionally provocative in its stupidity and illegality. Some rude guy claiming he had a whole bunch of toxic glyphosate to sell. I'd say calling that provocateur a jerk would have been a more accurate reply for Mr. Smallman. I immediately set, immediately after that, a set of sore losers jumped on their bandwagon together, so artificially offended by one mildly slang word, which many kids use at school these days, then they attacked the very director who has been the longest supporter of cutting waste and improving this district. It is clear to many that these nitpickers are just looking for any slight imperfection to attempt striking at the integrity of this board's commitment to represent the ratepayers. In the words of a famous wise man with the initials JC, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. So who here has never used a slang word in their life? And who here has never regretted using a wrong word in their life? I don't think anybody has. So really, these are people throwing stones that shouldn't be throwing stones. Mr. And it was such a small thing. Mr. Smallman and these directors are doing their best at correcting previous waste and on improving our district for the ratepayers. The, the results are showing this, and this is what's important. I suggest the critics of one mild slang word, which was sincerely apologized for a few times already, stop being sore losers and start being helpful instead of deliberately destructive. Directors, please don't be distracted and keep up the great work. Thanks. Anybody else? Chuck? Um, so I won't be uh, even quite as long as Nick was. Good evening. I have been told that Chair Henry submitted a complaint to the employer of a member of the public because of this person's communications with others during the period of time in which Director Smolin was facing criticism regarding his recent speech that resulted in censure. My understanding is that Chair Henry accused this member of the public of being divisive and disrespectful and suggested that they received, that they needed training. Although I am not in possession of a copy of that communication and feel it is unlikely that I can obtain one, I believe that my understanding is accurate. And Chair Henry, if I am inaccurate in any way, please correct me, correct my understanding when I'm done speaking. I bring this up because I do not know if the other directors, staff, or the general public know about this, but I feel they should. If I were in the shoes of this person, I would believe this complaint to be intended to be cumulative. I'd also see it as a warning to curb my future participation in the public process if my opinion might be at odds with that of the current board president. No member of the public should have to even consider that their participation in public discourse could result in a possible threat to their livelihood by the complaint being submitted to their employer. I hope the board will choose a time to have a public discussion of this matter and implement appropriate measures so it is not repeated. Anyone? Uh, That's a clarifying question on that. Okay. Um, Chuck, I'm not sure I understood. Um, were you saying that that complaint was lodged against an employee of the district or just a, a, a general member of the public? So a member of the public. But it was against their employer? If the complaint uh, was against that employee, the complaint was submitted to their employer. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Hi, I'm Mark Lee from Ben Bowman. Um, my feeling is I think we talked about this at our little meeting down in Felton. We probably should have a workshop on appropriate uh, communication styles. And I gave you a reference to a uh, consultant to do that. Uh, we have the information. And I think that should be sufficient. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Peter Lang. I live in Boulder Creek. I was on the board in 1994 to 96, and I have followed what's going on. And this is my first opportunity to congratulate the new board members. It was a hard fought. Wasn't fair, but you won anyway. <laughs> and I'd like to say thank you for serving. It's a big commitment, takes a lot of time, and uh, it really interferes with your personal life. I hope everyone in the audience realizes you all have a good heart. You're all trying to do something for the community. 
and you should be treated with respect and dignity. So thank you very much. Any, anyone else? No? Okay. Um, just real quick, if the chair doesn't mind, one of the uh, public comments uh, in regard to use of glyphosate um, on the district property in Felton, um, I did make some contact today with the county and is looking into that whole situation. Uh, bring something back to the full board at the next meeting report. It's my understanding that glyphosate has already been used on the property, but I'm not sure if it's been district property or not. But I will uh, bring a report back to the board. Thank you. Excuse me, do we know when it was used? I didn't have that information. He, it was, he thought it was already used in the GAB method, and this was just a report on what was done. But it's through the county park. The library has several different county agencies working, and so I'm trying to you know, narrow it down to make sure we get proper information. It's not even sure if it was used on district property or not. But um, uh, it'll probably go also to the environmental committee, then back to the full board. But it was on that library site. Or Somewhere on the library site. To get just to get why? I mean, why? I do believe they are removing vegetation as part of the French construction room, project. Or? Poison oak, those types of things. French room. I don't know about French room. Um, no. But I don't really have all the particulars except this one. Let the board know that we're looking <coughs> into it, and we will bring something back. Great. Thanks, Rick. All right. Uh, anyone else? Mm -hmm. um, I did have a comment that you're going to be addressing the, the letters and all that at a later time, right? The letters regarding. Um, 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 do you mean the board right, the resignation? Right. So I think my comments were should Or be the letter to the. To the paper and the whole, the whole issue. E. e. Okay. Okay. So I'll wait until that time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, if there's no other comments, let's go on to unfinished business, USDA loan. Okay. Hey, um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kirsten Plonka. I am an engineer with Water Systems Consulting, and we have been helping the district with the USDA loan application process. So today I am here just to give an update on the current status of the loan, where we're at, next steps, a schedule, and um, answer any questions that may, you may have on where we're at with it now. So in this presentation, I'd like to go over um, a background of how we've gotten to where we have been. Um, we've gotten in a few of these, there have been various questions, so I wanted to make sure that I had budget numbers for you, um, current status, schedule, all of these have been asked for in prior meetings. So right now, today, we're going to go over background, current status, project budget, next steps, and last to schedule for completion. So this process started back in August of 2017, and at that time, WSC was asked to look into different loan options for the district. And the district was trying to figure out the best way to pay for some projects. There was a large VIP list. And so we were tasked with um, an on-call as-needed contract to take a look and we evaluated SRF loans, a few other smaller agency loans, and came to the determination that the best thing for the district was actually to pursue a USDA loan. So the next steps then were we actually met with USDA DA, to determine eligibility and the district met the requirements not for grants but for loans. So we reevaluated that along with other types of programs. Still, it was determined to be the best path forward. At the time, then we took it to the board, and they approved pursuing an application process in November of 2017. At that time, as was presented then, staff chose projects that were highly rated on the CIP list for total construction cost of $5 million. It is important to note that it was $5 million on the CIP list for those cost estimates that were on the CIP. They were previously done, so they were a few years old at that point. So at that point, um, excuse me. So at 
that point, um, we pursued, we started off with a package with USDA, started the loan application and the preliminary engineering report, which for those of you who are here at that meeting is a big report that outlines the whole process, does alternatives analysis, cost estimates, um, how you're basically going to um, complete the entire loan package. And we chose multiple projects for this. Well, in that year, USDA had a surplus of money and was expediting loan application processes, uh, projects. And so there ended up being a very expedited environmental compliance deadline because in order to complete your loan application process, um, national environmental regulations had to be done. So NEPA had to be complete. You could finish CEQA later, but you had to finish NEPA. And so that revised our project list. So we had to choose different projects that were not as environmentally complex in order to be able to meet those regulatory requirements. So along with staff, we looked at projects and we came up with um, still high prioritized projects that were in the same ballpark of five million. We revised all the construction costs into current, um, current costs because the construction environment has changed dramatically since those original costs were done. And our new construction costs, we chose projects that totaled 5.5 million. And that number is important because later I want to go over the loan costs and how we're at the number we're at now. So remember, construction cost was originally 5.5 million. So last year we were really rushing um, to try to get this done by the end of September. And due to last minute fish and wildlife requirements, we were going back and forth and back and forth. We missed that deadline. Not a huge deal because they were on a rolling acceptance. So we just kept going. Well, because we were wrapping up our environmental, it got submitted and we went back and forth with the USDA and we did our revisions and everything they asked for. And finally, um, it was actually accepted on December 21st. Now that date is very important because it was the day that the federal government shut down. Mm -hmm. And so USDA rushed it through that morning and it was a very, okay, here you go, here's your letter of conditions, and here we go, and we just didn't hear back because USDA shut down. Mm. And so we knew that we were accepted because the formal acceptance was this issuance of the letter of conditions. However, I didn't have an email that said, yes, we have everything in line. So I think that it has come back to the board to say, yes, we had the loan, which is true, but we didn't have that formal piece of writing that I wanted to come and say, yes, everything is locked in. I can tell you with 100% certainty that everything is as it says, and today I can absolutely say that. And it is, act, it is valid as of December 21st. So you have a email now? Yes, we have, and I've had and phone what's, conversations. What's the, date? what's the date on the email? Uh, it wasn't until they reopened back up, so like February. I can go back and find it, but yeah, whenever there's... they opened back up, I had a call in that day to make sure that we were, everything was good, and it, it was. Like which budget year does this go into? Um, so this will still be in this budget, this fiscal year. Oh. So we were trying to jam it in by the third End of the... Federal, that was the end of the that federal, was last federal year. So we didn't get that, but so we, we jammed everything in, and we changed mm -hmm. our projects to get it in. We didn't get it in, and now we're in the next year's budget cycle. Yes, it's however, budget. it well, would have USDA. taken, it would have been prolonged had we kept those original ones. Some of the environmental was very complex. Okay. So. Okay. And the percentage were. Oh, yes, so that yeah, was the, yes, yeah, so that's the important thing is the 4% was locked in at 40 years had it waited until. Um, January, it would have gone up. Or it could have gone down as it interest rate, understand that the interest rates are going to start going down here. So. so, the information we have from USDA is it's not um, calculated the same way that like, bank interest rates are and so theirs. So, as of right this quarter, it is mm -hmm. has increased. Yes. So right now that rate is locked in and the good news is there are no prepayment penalties. So if the district decides to make the decision to pay this loan off early, there's there's no penalty for that. They can pay it off at any time. And at this point, all environmental has been completed. So both NEPA and SUCA, which would have had to been done before construction, but all the environmental is now done. So next I wanted to go over the project budget so that everybody understands where the dollars are actually going. So the construction cost, again, is approximately 5.5 million. Um, these are the project costs. These are 
these are dictated by USDA. These are not numbers. They, they basically have a, a chart that says, okay, you have to have this percentage for all these different portions. The reality is, is that lands and right of way, most of these are already in public right of way. There may be some cost savings here that won't, or, or some money that won't actually be spent. Um, you know, they have 80,000 in legal fees that may not be reached. Um, so some of this is just dictated, the whole thing is dictated on what percentage that USDA says that these percentages have to go into this number. Including the engineering fees? Including all the engineering fees, yes. Um, so the total that USDA, based on our construction cost, the total that USDA approves you for is 8.8 .8 million. You do not have to borrow 8.8 .8 million. If your numbers come in lower, you only have you, you can just borrow whatever you actually want to get reimbursed for. So, um, okay. So the next steps that where we're at is right now we are completing the engineering agreement between USDA and um, the district, and they have specific formats on bid documents and contracts with engineering firms. And so we have to make sure that everything meets their formatting. So we're in the process of working with USDA on that. They also have to approve all of your designs and all of your contracts. And so, and a lot of that is just formatting. They want to see specific things. They want to make sure that things are done efficiently and that we actually are doing what we said we would do in the, in the application package. So that's all, it, it's very smooth going forward. Quick question: are, yeah. are there requirements for engineering from the USDA consistent with what we would normally do as a district? Are they more dramatically more or less? Dramatically more, I would say no. Okay. They use a very common form of bid documents, which is a they're they're the two most common used ones, and so they want it a specific way, and then they've got specific language that they want struck out and replaced with this. They also require the Buy American clause. So American Steel, American Made Products, and they've got very specific language that has to go into the bid documents, but it's, you know, a cut and paste, you insert it in. Is there anything in there about you verify or anything like that? Or is it, um... I, have, I, I don't know that one off the top of my head, but I can get that information for you. So it is, um, and there are, uh, there are require monitoring requirements during construction to make sure that you're actually meeting those requirements. Uh, most of them are things that the district does, though, like prevailing wage, things like that. So you just actually have to check and verify, so there's a little bit of monitoring. But that would be the same as any grant or loan program. That's not different, just for USDA. So we have to meet all of their requirements. And last, um, we are required, within the terms of the loan, to meet a five-year construction schedule. All the projects need to be done in five years. And although we have multiple projects in this loan package, all the projects have to be completed before the district gets reimbursed. So that is important because, I want to go to the next slide. Here is the schedule that district staff and I have worked on. And as you'll notice, it's not five years. And there is a reason for that, which I'd like to, go, I'd like to outline. So the way that we, so I've looked at this and I said, okay, we have five years starting in December that we have to get this done. But there are some outlying factors here. And with recent experience, we've had a little bit of trouble getting a, like competitive and multiple bids on projects. We've had a little bit of trouble getting a lot of firms proposing on RFPs. And so I was thinking, you know, if we can make these into larger packages that are biddable, and so for instance, a mile of pipe is a good, a good it, it's achievable by a contracting firm, a, a contractor. It's, you know, you get the dollar signs up a little bit, you'll get more bids and more competitive bids. So by combining some of these packages, it's really important, and you'll get, you'll, we'll end up with a better product, but we'll also, there's potential to save money there as well. The other thing that goes along with this is that, you know, every time you put out an RFP, every time you go through a bid process, it's staff time, it's money, it costs the district money to go through these processes. You know, having one pre-con meeting versus four pre-con meetings or five pre-con meetings will definitely save time and money and you'll get some efficiency there. <coughs> so 
we mm. put this out, so swim take has already been designed. There are some changes that need to be done to the design because it was done prior to the district pursuing a U USDA contract. So there's some formatting and some minor changes that need to be done to the design. They should be somewhat minimal and the um, consultant that originally designed this, the tank should be the one to make those changes because he has to sign and stamp them. And then it will go back out to bid. So that will have to be done in the format of USDA projects. So if we can get that done relatively soon, that project should be done, completed in summer of 2020. Next, we put together the one pipeline that is about a mile long into one package. And it is a larger diameter pipeline and um, goes through multiple multiple places. So it, it is more expensive than the other one and there, there's good reason for that. But if we can do that as one project, it's a good size project. And then last, if we go and we combine all the other four pipelines, it equals out to approximately a mile of pipe and we'll get better prices on that. In no way does this say that um, you can't use the same design firm or the same contractor. It just means that if we stick to this schedule, we'll be done in approximately three years and after talking with finance, it seems like there's potential to save some money on the interim interest that the district would be borrowing if we can complete this sooner, because then we can apply for funds to be reimbursed by USDA sooner. So all in all, with this schedule, um, staff is, has been really supportive and really helpful. And I went through multiple iterations of how do we mix and match to try to get the most efficient and, and cost conservative projects out there. This is the schedule that makes the most sense to us. So if we can stick to this, we'll hit it in three years. However, all the projects have to be done by December of 2023 in order to be re reimbursed by USDA. Yeah. Is it possible to do two and three concurrently? You, yeah, the short answer is yes, as long as you have enough um, staff to support those projects all at the same time. So for instance, if you, yeah, as long as, you, as long as you have internally enough enough support. Absolutely. That's going to push us because in two, there's a considerable amount of interface with existing uh, district customers tying over and so forth. And that's what usually district staff handles. When we start working with our customers, we don't like consultants and <coughs> contractors. We like to face the district out there. So uh, contract two is definitely going to have a lot of interface um, with our customers. How many hookups on it? Ooh. There are going to be changed. It's probably a good 50. And on the other Depending. On the other it's hard to say. I mean, I, uh, without, I hate to give you, I hate to give numbers without. They all, they all have hookups, but the, the lion zone is going to be more difficult because it also has um, existing distribution, laterals, and so forth. That have to, to tie in. To the new, yeah. Right. It, 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 it's more of a distribution system where the other ones um, don't have quite as much. I'm not saying it can't be done, but you're starting to really stretch the existing staff because those are the existing staff that are still fixing ways to operating the distribution system. There's some of it we can handle, but not too much at one time, especially with all the other projects. These are not the only projects going on. Or the Lompico uh, projects and uh, other different projects that they we're interfacing with. But the shorter the time period, the less we have to pay an interest on the bridge line, right? Yes. That, that's the other that, Yeah, that was ahead. what we were, I was trying to gain to yeah. connect. Okay. And this, Stephanie felt, because you are actually, you're borrowing money from the interim, some of it, but she, she doesn't think that you need to borrow all of it as an interim. So it actually will take some cash flow from the district just to move forward. So I wanted to make sure that this was reasonable from a financial standpoint for the district. And she she felt that this was doable. So that is the last slide I have. Um, there's This is an informational item only, so there's no recommended action, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. So these... I mean, these, the, the three yeah, the three, no problem. <laughs> um, these three projects comprise of the um, USA, uh, 
these are all separate loans, or they're all the USD for one, they're two, three? They're all one loan. It is, it's a package of okay. five pipelines and construction of the tank. So pipelines have not been designed. They need to be okay. designed and constructed. And then so the tank swim be tank, 1.8 million. Line is approximately 2.7. And that's just for this, the swim tank, right? I mean, I remember we did we approve like a contract for the foundation for the swim tank? And Oh, the blue tank. Blue the blue tank, tank. right. Okay. Uh, we haven't done anything on the uh, the swim tank. We re we bid it. It came in. How many gallons is the swim tank? Is it uh, it'll be the new tank will be 60, 60 roughly sixty five thousand gallons. Sixty five thousand dollars right. for one point eight million dollars, and that that one point eight that includes all your costs. And all, it includes everything. One point eight million dollars. Um, so we are not the design consultant on this. Okay, but it includes a design consultants, WSC. The design was already done, so this okay. is the construction cost only. Your, the we, 1.8, 2.7, and 1 is construction cost only. Okay, and then we have the, we're have we going to do the Lion Zone pipe for $2.7 million, one mile of pipe. What size pipe is that? That one, it, so it's big. <laughs> big. Um, <laughs> 12 inch, yeah. We're guessing a 12 yeah. inch, it's to be confirmed in, Cal during design. California Drive, Sequoia Avenue, Hen Road, Hillside Pipe, one million, one mile pipe total. total. What size those is the are pipe? So those have not been designed yet, so it will be confirmed during design, so but are expected to be six, approximately six, six, six or eight, eight inch. So that one million, does that include construction costs? That's only construction costs. That's only construction costs. Yes. Yeah, if you add those numbers up, it comes to, you know, the construction cost number. Okay, right? so this, all this, all these one, two, three is a USD A loan that you're working on, right? Yeah. There's six but projects you guys have been in that for this group. Long. Okay, very good. We've made it through. So at this point, um, WSC is helping to program manage, but that is our goal right this now. This is from 2019 to the end of the 2021, September of 2021. It does actually end for that line is. Okay. And this is all the stuff that you're working on and to get done. This to is try. my recommendation on a on a design and construction schedule for the district, and okay. it is in conjunction with staff. I am helping to move this forward and make sure that this is a successful program for the district. But we do not, WSC does not have design contracts for this. We do not have, uh, we have a program management, some scope, budget left over in scope for program management. Uh, but you will go out with RFPs for design and then bids for contractors. This is, yeah, this is separate. You're going to say something. No, I'm not. <laughs> I thought you were going to say No, I just here, here to uh, sum it up. Right. You don't have anything to say? No, it was just a presentation. <laughs> uh, she, her firm would do, has did the act, the application on the USDA loan. Right, and I that know part that. was coming to the end, and she's giving you an update. Of okay. Work okay. Um, and um, how much money have we spent so far on the USDA portion? On the, getting on your the application. Yeah, your activities on the USDA portion. Okay. What's the total um, amount we spent? So the original contracts were 270 and but some of that is environmental. So including environmental, that's fine. I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna ballpark this, so I would have to check actual numbers for you. If I remember correctly from invoicing, I think we've spent 210. We came in significantly under budget on the original application process. And the reason for that was because we expected a lot of back and forth with the USDA, which we did end up with more. It was bummed that we didn't make that September deadline. But um, so through December, we came in significantly under budget. So we made an agreement with the district to uh, program manage with what was left of the budget to get you guys to the point where you're ready to go out for the rest for these things. So we added, we had a no cost change order to add for additional services to the district. So, so what will that wind up being? I'm sorry. I oh, I think that. the total contract was 270, 270. including, mm -hmm. and that also includes the environmental subconsultant who sure. did all your NEMA CEQA. Mm -hmm. So that, that includes all of it. Okay. Any questions from the public out there? Ed? How much under budget was, uh, was your for the USDA? I think there were about 90000 
And you want ninety thousand more now, or did you use that ninety thousand for something else? No, we, there's still budget left in the contract. We did a change order to this, use a portion of that to facilitate moving this forward. For example, coming up with a to program manage. So you came on, you came out of two hundred seventy thousand. You came up ninety thousand low lower, and then you use that to do this up here. The, there's no. still money left in the budget, so we have not spent that $90,000. We've spent a portion okay, of it. Just a second. I'm sorry. I don't know who's talking about this. Uh, I'm getting two words, two people talking. No, no. So, I'm concerned is, so you still have to make a contract or an RFP for the engineering services. WSC is not going to do that. You don't have you, this one point. Five million for engineering services, right? It, it, your estimate here. You've already done some of that work. The preliminary engineering report is already part of that cost. Uh, yes. So part of that cost. How much was that? The total. Well, the preliminary engineering report. It was part of the larger scope. So it was part of that two hundred seventy thousand. This number, though, is just dictated by USDA. So that is not a cost estimate from WSC to say how much engineering services, engineering fees actually come to. So that's just a percentage dictated by USDA. Yeah, USDA. That $1.5 million is a number dictated by USDA. Uh, all right. So, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, WSC has two different contracts with the district. I understand yeah. that. One's for the? One's for the USDA loan and, and right. for on-call engineering services. And if I remember correctly, the first $60,000 that we entered into was for getting loans for Lompico and for the district. And then they, then they said they couldn't do that. You couldn't get the loans because Lompico was an assessment district and you couldn't access, put an assessment district with the, in, in the loan package. I'm not sure about that. I I well, I have the recording. I, I, and I, 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 I totally agree with you, but I, I'm just not sure of that. I wasn't. Yeah. That was before my time. So that original contract did include a portion of that original contract was for researching loans. A portion of that went to other on-call projects, and the way the scope is. It doesn't written. say that in the contract here that you entered into for the sixty thousand dollars. It doesn't say anything about uh, doing anything on loans at all. But you did, I know you, I you was here when you gave a presentation on the work you've done for the loans. Yes. And then you said you couldn't get the loans because of complications, because one was an assessment and you couldn't mix the assessment with a non-assessment loan. For, you were doing two loans, one for um, Lompico, which was an assessment district, and one for... Uh, San, San Lorenzo Valley Water District. I personally did not look into a loan for Lompico. Well, then it's someone. Well, I think the no, previous manager. Like that, I think someone lied to us. Then, but that, I think, I think we have to research. I think okay. we have to chalk it up to the mists of time at this point. I would yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, our scope was to look for the loan for the district as a whole. Whether that included Lompico or not was not part of my. <clears throat> so how much is left in the two hundred seventy thousand dollars? It's um, not spent. I, 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 I have to go look at my invoices, but if I'm, so I will, I can get you a, a serious number, but I want to say it's approximately, conservatively 50, probably $60,000. And what's that going to be used for? That is to help, to program manage, so to assist the district in hiring design firms, to facilitate making sure that monitoring happens, to coordinate with USDA. There's still a lot of meetings and coordination that has to go on with USDA. So this is a process that is going to last the next, if we can stick to the other schedule, three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what happens when you run out of that money? Then the district either decides to give us a contract amendment or they decide we can handle it from here. Or they could hire another engineer, an engineering firm. They could hire another engineering firm. Maybe. Would that be advisable in your estimate? I mean, as we, as we move into the, the uh, as specifications that we will put out on our RFP, we've got to we've got to get to that yeah. point. So, so okay. we need to.
Yes. I just, I just have a question about the payment. I'm confused about it. The, 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 um, the district doesn't get refunded until the construction is done. done. So, so the district has to pay up front without loan money? Okay, so that's actually a great question. So, so, there's a, so, the, so the district ha, is going to actually take out an interim loan. Right, so right now, it's called a bridge loan. And right now, and so it's backed by USDA, but not provided by USDA. So they'll have to go out for private funding for an interim amount of time. And the expectation is that the interest rate will be higher than 4% currently. So it's in the district's best interest to get through that interim and pay the interim loan back as quickly as possible and borrow the money from USDA at a lower interest rate. Oh, okay. However, the district also has determined that they don't think they need to borrow the entire 8.8 .8 million, that some of it can be front loaded with cash reserves and then reimbursed for what the district has. And I would defer to district finance to actually give the details on that. And I know she's looking at different options to, to finance that. But if you just have your first project that you have to pay in April or May, then you only have to borrow that much money. You don't have to borrow the full amount, right? It's all, pro it's all projects. So, But you, you just borrow a smaller amount, and then you have to borrow a larger amount when you get further along? But without well, understanding how exactly how the bridge loan terms are, I, I can't speak to that. I think she that. can take draws off of the bridge loan, but I, I don't want to speak for her. I see. Okay. I'm pretty sure she can. All right. It'll, it'll be back. Mark, yeah. Okay. you? Yeah. Um, thank you for your presentation, by the way. Uh, regarding the uh, engineering fees of $1,556,000, <laughs> we have, uh, this was dictated, as you say, by USDA. Uh, of the engineering fees included, you have a pl preliminary engineering report. What percentage of that 1.556 do you recall, and also any of the other percentages? I don't, I'd have not. to go, I, I can get you that information. That would be very valuable. No problem. It yeah, be, it's, we, it's we'd, basically. We'd like to correlate that with what has been spent on what percentage of this sure. budget pie, this, this increment. We can get those that information to you. I also would caveat that, though, that this is just a straight percentage that USDA says you, we're reserving this and we're going to say that we're approving you for this loan amount. It doesn't mean that you actually are going to spend those or that your contracts are going to come anywhere near to what they say. So I really am hesitant to say this is your <laughs> estimated engineering cost because I personally don't think it's going to be exactly this. No, I understand, but this is kind of off the bat, you know, off the um, yeah. napkin here. I'm trying to get a feel for the ratios that you have in the budget here. And okay. you say the environmental report is already completed. Yes. The, the NEPA and CEQA, so that's done, right? Yeah. But we need to know what it actually cost. And also the design has not been done yet. For at least uh, two uh, of those contracts. Two, only the first one. For the pipelines, it yeah. has not been done. Also, construction administration. We need a percentage for that and residential project representation inspection. These all need to kind of be detailed out a little bit, even if they're guesstimations. Okay. One other thing, you have a contingency of eight hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. Is that for cost overruns uh, that are anticipated? So that's also a guesstimation at this point, or based on the ten percent of the total budget. Yes. Okay. So you have sixty thousand dollars still in in the kitty under your original two hundred seventy thousand. Plus or minus five thousand, correct? Okay. So the interim loan, the interim bridge loan is five hundred sixteen thousand estimated. That's not you have you know, line item one, two, three, four. Uh, the fourth one down, five hundred sixteen thousand interim interest. Is that for the bridge or both the bridge and the FDA USDA loan? Bridge. That's the bridge only. Mm -hmm. Also, one other question. Regarding uh, your prioritization of the, of the five projects, did you estimate uh, this based on number of people served first? For example, uh, USDA contract number three affects my neighborhood. It affects 300 residents in my, in my particular enclave. Whereas the swim tank, or rather Lion, uh, only affects 50 households, correct? So one has a none of these affect three hundred customers. Well, hold on a second. Um, 
the projects were selected for a couple different criteria. Yes. One is design on the, the the ease of design of more, the more complicated ones were designed with sand hills and those type of things were taken off the list. So some of these projects were picked on the age of the system, the, the amount of leaks we have in the area, okay. the amount of people that the Lion Zone will feed 100% of our customers pass through throughout the whole district as it moves water <coughs> in our surface water treatment plants okay. in, in conjunctive use and to move it to south and north. So it, it was a, it's a very high priority project. I see. Um, they were picked for multiple of reasons, and um, and they're all high up on the priority list, and they all have their reasons for replacement. Now you say the sand hills was left out, yet I see the sand hills resident, residential streets that you've outlined in the contract right. number three. That's correct. Being, but all the work is done in the pavement, and so the yeah. environmental um, consultant looked at that, and it didn't require the sand hills permit because it's done in the No, no, I'm not referring to the environmental permit. I'm talking about number of hookups being served, uh, Ray. There's a significant amount of people being served in the sand hills by the their repairs of that pipeline. So I'm just wondering, uh, it was there, the the order was based on. The criteria of the first, the highest priority. I, I need. I was. I'd like to have a reiteration of what those priorities were. You gave me a few of them. No, and, and the the, the Heen Road pipeline is to replace a piece of pipeline that is in the sand hills that's above ground that cannot be realistically repaired. It's over the years. It used to be buried, and now because of the ground movement in that area, it's above ground. Um, very fragile pipeline. Okay, so why not just cap it off and, and, and yeah, we need it. We need it to trans we need it to move water from one end it, to the it's other. It's still being used. It's still being used. All these are still being used. Okay. All these are a high priority of one for one reason or another. Okay. Can I ask a clarifying question? Were you asking what the priority was for the projects that were chosen or how the priority for the schedule? No, the priority for the schedule. Uh, that was dictated by USDA based on environmental concerns. I see. Okay. Thank you. I have a question for you. When that one million five hundred thousand for engineering, does USDA really know how much it costs to do anything in this area? Um, I, I'm going to try to answer your question. <laughs> the best way I can. USDA uses averages. They are, you know, they they do work. They do projects in multiple regions, and so the percentage that they come up with are averages of multiple districts and multiple projects. Could be higher, that's what you're saying. Could be higher. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to know to yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, it's you probably not, not going to be lower. All of the costs that are in here are planning level costs. So, for example, when you get to design a Lion Zone pipeline, the design engineer is going to come up with their a better engineer's estimate because by then you're going to have the pipe diameter and material and alignment set and so you'll have much better these are planning level costs and this is what was required for USDA and we had to update them because the other ones were so outdated that it was a significant difference 12 years old or something like they were they were different enough that I was very uncomfortable submitting those numbers and so as part of the process we redid them but it's at planning level numbers and we did take into consideration our experience even recently in conversations with staff with what bids have been coming in like and I personally know how difficult it's been to get contractors up here so we took that into consideration. And that's what's fun about bundling projects and mm -hmm. making them bigger. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And it's like it was strategic. Count brands, it's, they're smaller projects, they're not getting better. So mm -hmm. everybody's trying unique. I want you to get to multiple bidders. Get multiple bidders. Are there, okay. are there substantial barriers to contractors starting businesses in California? Because you would think that with that much business around, people would be flooding in from Oregon and Nevada. There are multiple Arizona. reasons why getting contractors is difficult everywhere in California. Mm -hmm. uh, from I can just say from my company's right. experience, all over we're seeing problems. The fires made it worse just because every contractor is busy. Right right. And right. then the Santa Cruz Mountains have, some of the roads are extremely difficult. There are some significant, unique um, barriers in this area that are, are overcomable, but it's still, it makes it difficult and more costly to construct. Okay. Virgil, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you. Um, 
this has been a very good, you prompted a very good discussion. I thank everybody for their, for their cooperation. Um, on your USDA estimates here, yeah. um, how restrictive are those categories? Is, uh, are there penalties if you go over in one and not in another? There are, no. so, so it's still slushy. Yeah. Within eight point eight million dollars, it's just that they're going to be criticizing or slapping your hand if you don't. And if no, actually, USA oh, is you. one of the best agencies to work with. Um, I've worked with them for multiple projects with multiple agencies. They are um, they want things done their way, but they are, which is their way, which is their format. Right. But they are not going to unless we did something that was negligent. Yeah. Um, then of course they would they would come after us. Uh, they want to see things done in an efficient manner. So the fact if we when we have the conversation to say when we bundle these packages, uh, I know because I've worked with this engineer before. That's how he likes to see things done. He likes to see contracts that are going to get good bids and they're going to get multiple bids. Um, we're going to get he'll be applauding the fact that we, if you guys prove that we can combine these packages, that will win us points for lack of a better word. Um, they also are flexible. They understand that costs change and that all these costs are estimates. So these even are if it, these are these are guidelines, and the final number, even if it came extremely high for as long as we had good reason for it, there, you can have a conversation of can we borrow more? Our goal is not to borrow more and actually get it to come in lower than these. But I think having some of these numbers actually higher is a benefit because the, that amount is already approved. Yeah, so there also is the option to take out additional USDA loans in the future for the district if the district decides to pursue them. Thank you very much. Good answer. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I live up scenic way where the swim tanks are. And I can tell you that many of my friends won't even drive up that road. And it is so narrow and so steep as it goes up that it's a switchback road mm -hmm. with sharp turns. And doing this tank up there, which I am all for, however, uh, we need our road. And you start sending heavy cement trucks up there, uh, especially when the land is not totally solid dry. And it, on some of these places, it's already sagging where you feel a little weird going down a one lane thing. There's a little pullover spot way down there. If two people meet up, you know, it's, it's an ego match sometimes. <laughs> and I, I'm just one, and it's one of the worst roads in the valley, according to a lot of people. Now, what happens if those trucks go up there and mess up our road? It's a county maintained road. So I, I just call the county. You know, you know how hard it is to get the county to go up there? Yeah, Doesn't we it seem did. to be? We did. <laughs> yeah, the county's afraid of going up that road. But, but the fact is, is that the person who does the damage is the one that should be responsible, right? Depending. I mean, the, the, tank, the tank is constructible. Um, the amount of concrete and equipment for that size tank, it's, it's concrete ring foundation. Yes, there's some retaining walls. But on a construction project for a water tank, it's a relatively small project. There will be heavy equipment, there will be dump trucks, six yard dump trucks, there will be concrete trucks, but it's not a, a huge amount. I can't picture a, a decent sized concrete truck going around Sylvia Way at the yeah. wide switch back there. Mm -hmm. And then also, right, that last one, and also that last stretch between Sylvia and Woodland where the tanks are is just wide enough for one car only, and that's a pretty long stretch. And, and that's why that price and came in so high, because they had traffic control, pilot car for some of that. Yeah, and that's why that project came so so high. And you get contractors from out of the area, they're even more right. afraid of those tight, narrow roads, and so the, the prices become more. Well, my, my answer, my question still hasn't been answered. Who's, who's responsible for damages that they cause? You said the county, but the county isn't really responsible for damages done uh, by other people. Well, I disagree with that. Okay, well, yeah, if, I, I, if, that if, was we're, if we're driving in, in, in with, the, with normal size, with the weight load vehicles and those type of things, that's the county's responsibility. Um, I think what you're saying is, as yeah. long as all the equipment meets, meets the, the standard the, for that the road, county has, that the county has um, declared yeah, for that, road. then it's the county's responsibility. Right. And if the county has been, shall we say, deferring maintenance mm -hmm. on a road that has those standards for whatever reason, and then something happens, well, it's still the county's responsibility. Now, they may differ. They may, they may differ sure. if something happens, if a culvert caves in with a cement truck, but if a culvert or a cement truck 
teams of Florida, I don't want to get on the subject for a long, but it's the cement truck's responsibility for its insurance to cover any damage that cement truck yeah. does. Okay. So but I, county, I don't want to get much into it. Uh, I understand. I don't, I don't want to prolong the question, but I would like to know who no. in the county... No, I don't. Uh, who at the county uh, would be the contact person for me to find out what the standards are for you? Public works. Public works. Okay. Public and they have standards for the back roads as far as weight? They should have standards. Okay. All right. Thanks. More than I do <laughs> for the roads. Tony? Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, ask the, the 5.5 um, to uh, the construction budget. Now, wasn't that planned? way in the beginning that amount when that first part when the project first started so when we first had this conversation with the district with in conjunction with district staff we they the district said we want to look for about five million dollars in grants loans whatever we're eligible for so that was the number we started with so we picked mm -hmm. projects from the original CIP with those right. older construction costs mm -hmm. that hit five million when things changed we felt that we had already brought to the public and the board that we were aiming for five million right. so we tried to stick to that same number or we ended mm -hmm. up with fewer projects but uh, my understanding is that these projects were all still very highly oh, ranked right. and very important projects and then we had to pick the ones that we could actually get done the environmental done that wasn't going right. to drag out years to be able to meet I the obligations. I remember that and when but what approximately when <laughs> What date did you decide on those, the ones that you now have, the projects on the list? I would say it's a year ago. Last spring, we figured out the final project list. We went through a few iterations. So there may have been a presentation that had different projects right. because those were the ones we were pursuing. And then as we got further into environmental, it was very obvious that, and like Lion Pipe was a longer, bigger project. And we cut a portion of it because we're like, okay, the environmental on this portion is too complex. So let's just do this other portion. We'll do the environmentally complex as a separate project. I just I know how that everything's gone skyrocketed. So I wanted to make sure that um, they were they were updated. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So maybe we could move on here <laughs> because uh, we spent quite a bit of time on this. You feel um, like you've been on a raptor cage? No, I yeah. don't, because I feel like you guys asked some really good questions in the past, and I was grateful for the opportunity to come, and I feel, I hope that I met your your expectations on the information you've asked for, and now you've seen a clearer picture as to how we got to where we're at now. So if mm -hmm. I achieved that, then it was a success for me. I, I think in, your, in future presentations, mm -hmm. uh, as we might have some, um, I think we're going to be more quantitatively focused, perhaps, okay. and numbers are great. Uh, yes, and discussing this, is, this kind of thing. I, I think maybe that is a bit of a change, and, and uh, so just something to keep in mind for future presentations. Sure, no problem. Okay. All right. So if Rick doesn't have anything more to say here, then we'll move on. Do you have anything more you want to say on this subject? No. I'll give you, Kirsten, a, a chance to wrap up. Okay. So we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, We'll move on to new business. Wow. That's for USC. So, uh, Rick, do you want to explain that to us? Sure. Um, in June 2017, uh, the board awarded a non call um, as needed engineering contract to WSC Engineering, uh, which was attached in your packet for a not to exceed price of $60,000. Uh, the intent was to provide engineering services to the district for small uh, or emergency projects without initiating a request for proposal every time service uh, they needed. Items covered under the contract uh, pursuit of funding, the options for front end documents for the past example well 5A, portions of the Bear Creek Road pipeline that was storm damage, Highway 9 storm damage in Brookdale, um, and they were used for an extension of, of, of staff engineering services. In November 2017, the board awarded an amendment of $20,000 in order to continue the work as needed, including finishing the design of the Bear Creek Road, that's where it failed just outside of town, a portion of the Ball Creek Fish Ladder, um, a debris removal project, which was removing storm damage debris from the fish ladder, and design coordinated coordination work with Caltrans and contractors for the Highway 9 storm damage pipeline repair project and funding support. 
Uh, a second amendment was issued in September 2018 for $50,000 in order to design the La Pico PRV, create CAD based standard drawings, design uh, crop farm service, provide support for the Lion Tank uh, access road rehabilitation projects, uh, write a draft and, and support staff with the Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Treatment Facility and uh, also uh, work with staff reviewing outside engineering design and criteria for the Valley Gardens uh, golf course, uh, possible Valley Gardens golf course service. Staff is requesting another $90,000 uh, extension to the current on-call contract with WSC Engineering for a total contract value of $220,000. To date, this contract has been very effective in providing critical engineering services for emergency and high priority projects uh, for the district. Um, additional engineering work remains um, as an on-call needed engineering services. Uh, the work that remains is not included. Uh, it could be standard drawings, uh, the revised RFP for Lion Tank Access Road, which is time sensitive right now, um, so, and also to support the geotechnical investigation and the environmental permitting and design for this uh, Long Pico Access Road, or the, uh, Pico, the uh, Lion Access Road. Provide planning specifications, support the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline, <laughs> which is a pipeline that is located on the south bridge that uh, is leaking uh, just on the, the shore of, of the river out over the span. Uh, that pipe is in a concrete chamber that needs to be replaced, which will take engineering plan specifications to be submitted to the county and to the state of California because it is in both Caltrans and the county's right away. Um, provide continual management for the Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Treatment Facility upgrade. We have a meeting scheduled with the Bear Creek Estates people, I do believe April 15th, to 17th. go over, me? 17th. April 17th, to go over the RFP that's been put together by um, WSC for the uh, perhaps uh, enhanced modifications. Um, and we have other various projects. Um, also, um, we do have our new engineering starting April 15th. Uh, we are two months behind in, in the schedule of our new engineering. Our first engineer that we tried to hire, we made it all the way up to the recruitment process, all the way up to the selection process, and he withdrawed his application. So it put us a couple of months behind. Uh, so we've been using um, uh, WSC to, to support those fill-ins. And we'll have a transition period of at least two to three months with a new engineer once he starts on April 15th to work on transferring some of these responsibilities over to our district engineer. You know, he just can't walk in cold and, and pick up these projects. There's a lot to it. Um, I don't want to stop the process that we're in right now. I want to continue. We're making progress on a lot of our projects um, until the loss of this contract right now. Um, for engineering services uh, on call as needed would be a, a shortfall for the district. If we were to go out and put out an RFP and do bidding, it will take several months and we'll lose that time and we'll wind up with an engineering service that's just a basically a rate schedule because we don't have detailed projects and a schedule to get detailed costs. So I'm asking the board to consider um, renewing uh, the contract. Um, if the board that feels comfortable would like to cut the contract back, this is a, an estimation that Kirsten and I sat and put together. Um, I didn't want to go too low, but I didn't want to have to come back to the board again I mean, uh, over and over. So there's no one saying we're going to use this amount of money, but I'd like to have it so we can move forward. Um, especially because we, we do have a new engineer coming on in transition. And if we don't continue this contract, I'll have to take up more of the slack, and it, it, we just don't have the, the manpower and the staff to, to continue. And we're already about two months behind, at least out at Bear Creek State with those people, um, trying to get their RFP out, um, and I want to continue moving. With that, I'll try to entertain any questions. You got questions? So I guess we're... we're just real quick, that it, to summarize, in 2017, the original contract was 20000 In September 2018, we did a revision of 50000 And now in April 2019, we we're asking for a revision of 90000 
so the the total that we would end up with would be total exposure would be about two hundred and twenty thousand down That's for that, which is about a forty percent uplift in what we've already spent, mm -hmm. uh, which is significant. Um, the original contract, as I understand it, was not bid because it was a small emergency. We just need you guys to do something. That's my understanding. And this goes back to prior management. Right. I get that. So we're, we're sort of dealing with some of the myths of time and legacy of the past as well. But as the contract kept getting extended, there was no RFP done at that time either. That's right. correct. These were all sort of very small incremental things. That's correct. Um, I think it's important that we keep momentum going. There's no question about that. From my perspective, speaking for myself, I don't have any problem with saying this is the number that's needed to cover us during a transition period while you and the new engineering manager put together what that engineering services budget needs to be going forward. Because I'm sure that our engineer is not going to be able to do everything that's, right. that's on the plate. And so we're going to need to have a hybrid mix of employee time and consultant time. But I don't have any feel for what that's well, going to be. And I, don't, I can't tell you exactly what, I, what we're going to be able to accomplish until we sit down and roll our sleeves up. And, no, I and with that. Kirsten's participation and the director of operations participation sit and, and, and move it ahead a schedule. I get that. I mean, this has been something that this district has needed for a long time, and we're very close to moving in that direction. You know, he'll be here, we heard from him today, he'll be here starting on the 15th of April, yeah. It's like 10 and days ago. We've got probably more work for him that he can, yeah, you know, no, that no. He can do in, in a year. And that even so, got to the capital so, improvement plans and all the other fun so, stuff that we need to do. So let me ask specifically, will WSC be doing anything on standard drawings for F Pertinences. I think I pronounced that right. In, in this transfer, okay. I can hold off. That, that was the, that was an original. That it's well needed. Don't get me wrong. I, we I get we that. do need standard drawings, but I can hold. I can hold off on that. Right, revised RFP for Lion Tank Access Road Rehab Project. So we're gonna talk about maybe hiring somebody for the geotech. That's correct. Could they do the RFP? I wouldn't recommend that they do the RFP. I mean, they're finishing up on their work. They're the original geotechs that did all the exploration right after they were the on-call, so to speak, uh, emergency engineer that responded. They were bassoonists that worked for the district for many years. And we are real close with their final, but when we went out to try to get an RFP, there was just too many questions from contractors. The contractors had, well, what are this, what that, and we still, have to get a scenario down of exactly how we're going to make this repair and make a recommendation. And Kirsten's work in that, or WFC's work in that, and getting that RFP was important. Um, we had several meetings with them, and, and we need to continue with that. To have, so that's someone representing the district, and that's kind of a specialized field. How much is that, do we think? B. That part of her contract? Well, no, how much is B, right, revised RFP for Lion Tank? I don't have a broke down that way. I'm, That's hard to say I'm, too. I'm, yeah, without the revised geotech and a, and a project, we're not far enough along from the village. Because we don't have that contract with Hero Casino Chip to continue with that work. Uh, plans and specifications for Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline. I don't have all the background data to come up with a task. Not there yet. We can yeah. do a task order once we have the data. That's how you would cost out an RFP as well. Uh, if we were doing a proposal, but without having background data, I, I can't cost it out. I, I mean, I'm very uncomfortable going to 220 k without having gone through an RFP process at some point. I, I understand the need for work, and I, I don't want to lose any momentum, but that's a that's a huge uplift on where we are, from where we are today. Well, let me cut it in half. And then if I run into a problem, I'll bring back a more detailed... Yeah. To board or a lot of discussion. I don't know. That's, that's what would be one of my thoughts. I wouldn't want the board to say, we don't want to continue this, go out to the RFP. I would rather cut this back, cut it in half, and uh, uh, 
then work within my budget, and if I have issues, we'll bring it back to the board. By that time, if I have issues, I'll have the new engineer bring it back to you, and I can sit here and <laughs> 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 so have to say, yeah. do that. So, yes. so well, I, I want to. We could do that. I, well, I, mean, I don't I'm think that of, would impact our workload, so to speak, at this I'm, point. I'm sort of done with questions for now. I wanted to. Yeah. You know, yeah. Bill, I think it's important to understand what we're talking about here and how this could be a very huge cost saving measure for our transition of having our own in-house engineering department and construction crew here. Um, there's two reasons. One, the market for contractors. We saw in the last bid on the PRB, there was hundreds of thousands of dollars of high bids and we, we weren't having trouble getting bidders. We don't have, we, it's design build. We don't have to go through the bidding process. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. I estimate probably about a million dollars a year that we could save if we could establish that. But we're just beginning to do that right now. So, I mean, I'm not one to, to put a stopper on, you know, because we have this, these projects right here, you know, I don't, you know, because I understand, and I, you know, I accept the fact that we haven't got this set up right now. But, you know, I'm a hardliner, you know, we need to get this, we need to get going on this. And I, I want to, you know, we need, we need work and I want this new engineer or whatever to get in here and get work and, and do it and we need work for him to do. And I'm not going to accept the excuse that, oh, well, we just don't have this set up right now and stuff like that. And so th this is this is real money here. I mean, this is this is the, the kind of value that I think that I bring to this board that we that we can you know really save some serious serious money here. So you know, I mean, I you know, I'm not going to you know, you're asking for another ninety grand here. You know, we're going to take there's uh, five million dollars worth of work. I want that. I want a million dollars of the work of that. I want this district to do, and we'll do it for a lot cheaper. And we're going to save. We're going to save. End up saving the district a million dollars. So I, I believe that we can do this. I mean, a lot of the water districts that do do <laughs> their own work, they, um, they they kind of screw up because they don't have the they don't have competitive work crews. And but now now these days with the competitive markups, the PRB job in Long Pico, we, we were awarded a job for four hundred ninety eight thousand. The next bidder was six hundred seventy thousand. And the other one was like eight hundred thousand, and we sometimes we get jobs that are only a bid, and that's just a two week job. A job can be done in two weeks. So we're talking we're, we're talking we're hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars there. We can end up saving if we if we set up this crew right, like Rick said, roll up our sleeves and get this going the right way, that we can do this. So, you know, I'm going to be a hardliner. You know, you know, I'm not going to agree to. You know, another increasing WSE costs. We want it, we want to, we want to start doing the work that they're doing, and so that we're paying for. And that way, we can save more money more effectively. But let's hey, they're doing. Chris is doing a great job, and we got these three contracts right here that I want to see get done. I want to see them get done under budget. I don't want to hear about oh, we need another extra. 90 grand or whatever to do it. No, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know why, I don't know why this is coming up. Why, why is the 90 grand, why do you need an extra 90 grand all of a sudden? You know, what's going on? I thought you, did, you figured this out by now. We, you know, come on. Well, there's still a lot of work to do. We don't have people to do it, Bill. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, we don't have any. Well, we need to get them. I mean, what's well, the hold up? Come on. Trying to find engineers Jesus is Christ. not that easy either. It's almost as hard as finding contractors, but. Let's go. We can do you it. Wanna, if you want to stop these projects right now, we don't have the engineers. I, well, I don't. Assist. I don't. I, I'll you know me. I don't, 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 don't want to stop. I'll cancel the Bear Creek meeting and until we get our engineer here, until we can get up to speed. Give yeah. me about four to six months, yeah. and then we'll get the RFP out for Bear Creek States. I can do that. Okay. Well, I, I want to, as a director, I want to put pressure on it. Get it. Get it. Get her done. So, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So, there's been these different amounts <coughs> voted on previously. That's correct. And everything had add up to 220,000 or is 220,000 if we give this 90 what we'll have available. What's what I don't quite get it. 
It's it's two twenty. If it's two twenty, two hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, with the ninety. If we prove the ninety, it would be two twenty. But but I mean, there's. So is this starting from day one? Haven't we ever spent any of this money? Yes, yes. we spent it the 20, then we spent it the, the 50, now the 50 is gone, now I'm asking. Well, we, we spent 60, yeah, then 20, yeah. then 50, that's 130. That's okay. Correct. And they're asking All right, so now, so yeah. what we're talking Six about dollars. spending then is $90,000, not 220000 That would make the board feel better and I could come back sooner if need be. I, I, th I think it's fair. I mean, the other thing here is I also am very interested in hearing what the engineer has to say as he starts scoping out everything that's on the plate and what he can do, what he needs help on, what... And, and I think it's fair to basically say we need X and we're going to come back to the board with Y based on that Analysis. I mean, that's just fair. We're still going to need. Right? We're still going to need additional. No help. question. The engineer is not Superman and not going to be able to no handle all these projects. No question. No um, question. We are going to need consultants, and hopefully, each of those consultants as needed will be bigger. So um, it will be a little more organized. Right. Instead of, you know, we're kind of, you know, I I picked up this. You picked up this. We've all picked up different things here, and we're trying to get it organized to where we can all understand where we're at on our projects and all of our contracts. So for the next two to three month transition period, your belief is 45K will cover you to allow you and the engineer to put together what that number needs to be going forward for outside consulting work. I think so, and we can come back. And if that doesn't work out in that time period, we'll come back at the end of that period with, with a report. Because I definitely don't want the Bear Creek Estates to stop. That's already no, I don't those, those poor people have already waited long enough um, for relief. And the Glen, the Glen Arbor the Bridge. Bridge needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the Lion Tank access. I mean, that's just that. We'll lose two million dollars, well, no, and then we'll have a mess on our hands. And we absolutely don't want to do that. Um, that's already a time extension because of the complexity of the work up there. That we received. And the FEMA's end. okay with that. Yeah, FEMA's given us a time, a one time extension already. Um, and it's hard even to get these other contractors to schedule our time in. Does Steve have any questions? So, the three things that were just mentioned 45,000, do you think they'll. It's, it's hard for me to sit here and give those prices until we, we, we don't know. sit down. It, we it, don't know. It's a guess. You know, yeah. I mean, our guess is as good as as good as the next, but it'll get us on our way. It'll get, get us, us on our way, way yeah, and then you'd have to come back. To where I, I feel we could have, have this discussion time. all over. I do feel I have ample time to sit down with the new engineering, with the director of operations, and with Kirsten, and talk and come up with a plan. Well, if we look at 45,000 and we divide by the, even the maximum rate, which I think is 275 for your, you know, you're still looking at 160 hours. That's basically four full weeks of mm -hmm. full-time work, okay. is that reasonable for what we have facing us? I mean... I can be I honest, know. you won't finish all of those projects with that amount of money, but in all fairness, you won't finish all those projects because line tank access road will take longer than that, right. at just because of how long how, how long right. it will actually take. So you, the next time, if he came back to you, I, on, I'll be fair, that's not going to, that's going to be more than a month of our time. We don't spend that much. We'll Even a on a high month, time. we're not spending 160 hours, and we're not at the top bill rate. I usually try to delegate down and project manage as much as I can. I figured. I was just yeah. using the worst yeah, case Yeah, I do number. want to be very careful. Right. We, are, we are not having <laughs> full principles work on all of your work, because no, that's I'm, just not cost-effective for anybody. I, I've worked in consulting companies. The, the rainmakers <laughs> make the deal, and the, the new graduates... I understand. I just want to be very clear know. for everybody's <laughs> understanding that that's not, yeah, yeah. That's not how we're working. Right. Um, so it will be more than a month of full-time uh, with that amount of money. But in all honesty, if we came back to you even in two months, some of these projects will be midway. But that's just because the projects take that long to actually complete. We'll have a better mm -hmm. estimate by project. Mm -hmm. instead of just and, th and that's what I think ultimately we're, but makes me uncomfortable. Oh, I, the I lack of, understand. We still don't have the staff time now to do that kind of work. No, no. It would be one thing or the other. Okay. And I don't want to, didn't want to use 
WSC's time to do our project planning out when I knew we were going to do your time. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want to put a monkey in the ranch, but I just I want to, I just want to put some pressure on you know something. Well, I feel your pressure. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I really do. Right? So, I have the same thoughts. Mm -hmm. I it's been tough. It's been a tough recruitment for one. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Steve, you want to say anything? Uh, well, I, I think I, I agree with sort of the compromise that's being discussed, you know, improving 45,000 at this time, but things continue to progress, I think it's the right thing to do. And uh, I'll do it with the discussion at this point. So, I don't have any other specific questions. Okay. Uh, how about the public? Any questions out there? Woo! Peter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Lane. I, you know, it's my first meeting in months, but it seems to me there, for the forty-five thousand or the ninety thousand, whatever, is there anything on paper where there's been a legitimate estimate, a deliverable, a timetable? It, I, please don't be offended, but it's, it looks like the Keystone Cops, everything's bottoms up, and it's Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't, I don't see it being organized, and so therefore it, it's helter skelter, and that, that's a very expensive way to do business. Sorry, but that's the way it seems. Mark? I agree. Hi, Mark. Clayton Benlo. Uh, kind of opened a little, a little bit of a, a can of worms there regarding the hourly rate. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned what is your, uh, compared to our staff hourly rate, what is your lower entry level engine, civil engineers? Um, you know, if you look in the packet, it's, so in, this, it's in here actually. Yeah, we, uh, and we still I'm have numbers, you guys on I'm our 2017 rates. Right. So, so I'll need. be clear for this contract, we have not increased our billing rate. Since twenty seven, since we started this. What morning. is your qualification? Uh, on this one, I am an uh, senior three. Senior three, which but is two twenty five. But I project manage, so keep in mind I have. Your PM. Yes. Yeah. So the senior three is two twenty five. That's where I guessed actually. You were. And I'm actually much higher now. Yeah. So no, we have not no, changed your rates. No, 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 no doubt. <laughs> and this, yeah. so for example, at the lower end, the staff planner engineer one would be one thirty seven. Yes. Right. On the rates we're getting, so, so that's that's kind of the range. So uh, you know, if we could take those hourly, the lower staffing engineering rates, and then divide it by that forty-five thousand dollars budget, we can get some fairly me uh, measurable uh, calendar times actually devoted. I will be clear: you cannot have an entry-level engineer do everything without upper supervision and QA QC work. So right. it can't always be a hundred and thirty-seven dollar an hour person doing something because they will take longer to do things and they yeah. also need oversight. But we do use them whenever possible. I've brought coworkers who have worked on your stuff who are much more towards the entry level. And they're doing engineer. drafting and designing. All Absolutely. The and our CAD drafter is not at that rate. Um, okay. So we do drafting for you guys. CAD yeah, operator is 110. Yes. So at a, at and what rate. is the engineer coming in? What is, may we ask for the public record? What is our, generally, what is our rate is? So we have a comparison. I don't have that in front of me. I can get it for you, though. That would be important to know. And thank you for not raising the rates. No, it's important. You guys are an important client to us, and I understand that you need to have a conversation that you need to have. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this may be a question about, uh, I understand, Kristen, you did the work on the, uh, the, uh, uh, what's the name of the place from the Brussels I had? The firehouse? No, the uh, trout farm. Trout farm. The trout farm. You did the on the fire the uh, fire service, service for the trout farm. What is the policy? I don't understand. Does the district charge the developer for the, do they charge the developer for the engineering? There's there's both. Some of it is district. Some of like the standard will be district, but the actual plan itself will be passed back to the customer. To the, to the developer. To the developer, yes. Okay. Um, Same thing with Valley Garden. Yes. I just, I, I have a, a problem because in the um, Lompico PRV stations, the, the first design that came out was that humongous 6 by 6 by 10 foot box with all the pertinent, uh, you know, the uh, PRV in it and the rest of the valving and all that stuff inside of it. And then it had to be changed because those wouldn't fit. Uh, it, they were too large. 
So, and I think I asked you, Rick, and I said, did we pick up any extra cost because the engineering snafu of designing too big a box? Are, There's probably a little bit of cost in there. But I don't, I don't the, think we should have paid for I, that. I they, will answer that. Yeah, she did not design the box. Yeah, she did not. The uh, clay valve came out with that standard of that vault size. You're kidding me. No. And yeah. so that was what happened is it got put into the plans at that size and it wasn't caught off the get go by so all clay, three of us. So yeah. clay valve gave the uh, correct. The, the, they, the gave us the, they gave us that dimension as a design. Okay. Um, well, that's just kind of planning in the way, you know, it has, you have to measure things first before well, you design. Goodness. Secondly, AWWA, you're a member of AWWA, aren't you? Yes. I, I, I understand that I believe that AWWA has standard drawings that you can purchase, probably in CAD form, or to, to then alter to your liking instead of having them designed by a engineer at 220 bucks an hour. They have standards, but they're written standards. I don't believe they have design or, I mean, actual design. I mean, they, have, they may have some standard design, but that's it. I haven't seen what they offer. It's not, they have standards, and we use their standards all the time. They use the standards I know, I know, I know the standards, standards, but I'm talking about the standard well, drawings. They're actual standard drawings that I haven't seen. Okay. If you want to get standard drawings, you just have to go to Long Pico. They can. <laughs> I know they're old, but they're they're no, easy I to. Just, uh, I just never seen. <laughs> they actually they put the out. We had the engineer. We paid five thousand dollars for a set of standard drawings with like almost three hundred drawings. That that uh, for everything that we put in. So, I mean, I even provided the one to you when you put that HDPE in. But, you know what the standard uh, requirements were for for installation. Well, look at them. I like the you know I mean we're a member of AWWA. We have all the standards. I mean, I'm just not thinking or seeing. But those can be bought in package <coughs> form for right. for a water district. We have. So, I'm just suggesting that would be a cost instead of individually each one being designed. Mark. Yeah, well, correctly, uh, I agree to the, the pathway that you're going for the lot. The compromise is you approve the $45,000 and we look at the uh, future budget as if we have time and do this incrementally so we can see what progress is being made. I think that's a wise idea. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else? Yeah, we. Yeah. I think that the district is required to have competitive bidding, and I think we've been out of compliance for a long time. I do understand the reasons that it happened in the first place, but like Bob said, continuing to do so when there is no longer an emergency and, I, and it's just a matter of convenience, I think is not doing a service to customers. And I know that RFPs take time and stuff, but this is how government agencies operate. Competitive bidding and looking for cost savings. Lou, you add your Yes. Um, I understand a lot of the issues that were raised tonight, and there's good reasons for the discussion that has gone on. But for me, it boils down to one fact, and that is if we want to make progress on our crumbling infrastructure, we need WSC. And let me be clear, we need them more than they need us. And I think Rick is right. We don't have the resources yet. We're planning on it. We're bringing people on board. We're trying to, to, to ramp up to where we can do some of this stuff ourselves. But we're not there today. And if we don't use the resources that we have, I don't know where we're going to be, but we'll probably be where we've been the last 20 years, which is not making much progress in infrastructure. And it is crumbling. And, and I am concerned. So I, I, for one, believe we should approve the full 90000 and just get on with things until we can get to the point where we can start doing things ourselves. <coughs> you, know, you, you have, when you're talking about outsourcing things, you have vendors, you have subcontractors, and you have partners. WSC is a partner. And thank God we have them, or we wouldn't be making the progress we have. 
So you know, let's keep that in mind, that, that the real end goal is to, is to fix our crumbling infrastructure. And if we want to make good progress, we need somebody's help. And right now, that only option is WSC. Nick? Uh, Rick had mentioned cutting the 90,000 into 45 and then coming back again and asking for more if he needed it. It doesn't really cost anything more to come back and ask for the other 45,000, does it? Pain of sitting there. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, for 45000 bucks, I'll do it. The, the pain uh, other than that, no. Yeah, so why not go that route and try to save the money and see what we can save instead of giving a big chunk away and figuring that probably will cover it, but we still might need more. Let's do it in, in, in a smaller segment and, and see if how far we can get with that with the new engineer and, and not do the 90000 I think it's more logical to do part now and ask for more later if needed, as needed. So, my understanding is that even if we did the ninety thousand, we we don't have to spend it. That's correct. <laughs> no, well, I, I I know you got ninety thousand. You're going to spend it. But I'm just saying that it's uh, as it's supposed to be as needed, right? That's correct. Okay. And, and given that the, the information that the public and the board has asked, and, and I agree that's information we should have, but we don't have, that go to 45,000 okay. and let us move ahead and let us start preparing some of this information. You know, I, I, I keep hanging my head on this new engineer before he's even here. Um, and I, I think you all will see a significant change. We have a professional engineer in that department that works on nothing but projects. No doubt. I mean, you will see a significant change. Art. Are we sending a posse up there to make sure that he's hog tied and doesn't escape out the back door? He's ready to go. I mean, he's ready to go, and I okay. think he's a great fit. Yeah. Good. Uh, is public comment over with? Is public comment over with? On this issue? Uh, well, tell me. And I just wanted to um, also agree that it's not just money, it's investment in time. And we, WSC, knows SLB so well and, and think of how long it would take to, you know, start all over again. So I, I agree. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think there's a lot of cost saving measures that we can do, like the bundling of the contract system, all that stuff. And then again, our in-house design bill. Okay. And so I'd like to make a motion, and I just to, this is only not to throw a monkey wrench into the progress, but to put a little bit of pressure that we create that department. So I'd like to make a motion to approve forty-five thousand dollars, and then if we need to come back the next meeting for another forty-five thousand dollars. No, another um, five thousand or ten thousand. I'll, I'll second. I'll second the motion in the spirit of providing the new engineering manager and our general manager the opportunity to come back with good numbers. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the fourth. All right. Director Smallman. Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and thank you, Kirsten, for entering our back to church. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to item 5B, board resignation uh, discussion. Yes, um, District Council uh, Nichols is uh, joining us by telephone. So she'll carry this item through to the board. Gina, you there, I hope? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Loud and clear. Great. Um, okay, so I believe most of you know by now um, that Director Bruce tendered a resignation letter uh, via email last week. Um, did this vacancy on the board, um, the board has an opportunity to decide between one of two methods to fill the vacant seat. One way the board can proceed is to um, make an appointment to fill the vacant board seat for the remainder of the term. 
Um, that has to be done within 60 days, or alternatively, the board could call for an election to be held on the next election date, which is in the fall. And the last recommendation is to fill the vacancy by appointment in order to uh, minimize the risk of having difficulty obtaining quorum, uh, which could create problems in terms of trying to move the district's business forward. So there's two things that that's recommending tonight. I would like to see a motion that um, de declares a vacancy, that a vacancy exists on the board pursuant to government code section 1780, and that directs staff to proceed with posting the notice of vacancy um, and establish April 24th at 5 p.m. as the closing date time for the receipt of applications for those who are interested in filling the board seat for the remainder of the term. So do we need to accept her resignation, yes. essentially, or how does that No, happen? there's really no, the, simply by operation of law, the fact that Director Bruce submitted a resignation letter means that there's a vacancy okay. for the code. There's no need to accept the resignation letter. Um, All right. So is it April 24th, that's the cutoff date? No, we haven't decided. I had a couple of questions. Um, Gina, if we were to go down the path of waiting for uh, the election, which is, I guess, November, um, we would pay for the cost of that election in November, and then we would also pay for the cost of the same, basically, to, now that now person would only serve out till the end of the term, correct? 2020? Correct. And then we would pay again for election in 2020. Mm -hmm. So effectively paying twice to to fill the seat. Okay. It would be very yeah. expensive. And do we know how much that cost is? About? About $35,000. $35,000. Plus or minus. The yeah. special election is even more because you don't have the other agencies. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, that's a substantial um, amount of money. Um, okay. Great. Thank you. Well, I, I feel that we should um, put it out for people to uh, send in their desire to be on the board and that we then decide after a certain period of time, which we have to give them at least 15 days, right? But it can be longer than 15 days. Right, Jane. That's correct. We've, we've suggested April 24th, which is more than 15 days from tomorrow, simply because that, for practical purposes, that um, we need the applications to put them in the board packet. So that will allow us to get it into the board packet for May 2nd. That's correct. Right. <clears throat> so it really would only be vacant for a month, effectively, for dealing with quorum and committee right. assignments. Right. That is if you can agree to, to appoint someone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We, have to the board. <laughs> we have to agree. Get, get the real weapons out for that, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, um, so is there any comments from the public on this? Yes. I, I'm just wondering what your, the basis of your uh, decision would be based on. What, what, what are you looking for in a board member? Somebody who wants to do the job oh, and has the time. I'm not sure that's on the agenda for tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. Gina. Oh. Sorry. Well, Gina, we, the question. Well, we know that. Sure. Well, we don't. So I think the agenda for this meeting was to declare the vacancy and then to decide which way to go. That's correct. Whether to fill by election or to fill uh, by call for an election. Okay. And then. There might be a discussion later about what you're looking for, but I mean, I don't. I, mean, that's, I don't think you can have that discussion tonight. I don't think we have that discussion. I'll let Gina answer that if she wants to. Could that be then put on next month's agenda? I don't know. It's up to the board whatever they want on the agenda. No, I mean, Gina. Uh, how? I mean. Can we really spell out what we want? Or we just put it out there for whoever wants to apply? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think you can limit it in any way. I wouldn't think so. The board, the, the, the 
board item that's before the board site does include a draft um, application, right. which suggests some inf which has contains fields for information that the board presumably would be interested in and would consider in connecting with applicants. Um, so, if there are suggestions of different items to put on that application, you know, different information that should be sought from applicants, that would be within the tonight's discussion. Yeah, we have to do that tonight in order to get it out as part of the notice. But I mean, there's no, just to be clear, there's no limiting, as long as someone is an eligible um, right. person, there's no limiting who can apply for the, right. the job. Right. I mean, there's, in, uh, about yeah, there's 17, there's 17,000 people, presumably, more or less, that could conceivably apply if they wish to. We're not limiting that in any way. Right. Yeah, but I mean, we could tell her what's on the application and that tells her what we're looking well, it's for. In the it's, it's, it's in, in, in the board packet. packet. It's the in the application. application. It's in the board packet and online. So, so basically it's your contact information, statement of qualifications, right. uh, volunteer experience, education, and why you're interested. Yeah. The, the reason, can I explain why I'm asking? Um, because Last month, you did not want someone on the environmental committee because she was had a science background. No. Was that? No. Did I misunderstand what? that? I think that. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Interesting. I I only wanted to have three out of four people. Uh huh. I thought you vetoed someone but, because but, of her. I did say something about science, but there were other people that we picked that do have a science right. background. I know. I just didn't understand that, and I I just. Wanted to clarify it. Uh, I guess you haven't been beat up by the scientists. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I like scientists. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like we scientists, all do. especially all right. if they're handsome. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> get on the board. Get on the board, and you can do it. All right. Well, I, I just was confused about that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you clarified it. So, all right. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Peter. I'd like to, Peter Lang from Boulder Creek, I'd like to save a lot of time and expense. That 35000 can go to the engineering department if we don't spend it. I nominate Nick Nakari. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want an Italian on Peter, you want the back? <laughs> I got a laugh anyway. Back to the, <laughs> yes, you did. Back to the, back to the future. Yeah. Anybody else out there? Laughs are always good. Uh, okay, Mark. Uh, I, I like Gina Nichols, uh, our, our council's uh, proposal to put out the bid for, you know, open it to the public, uh, and then go through the vetting process within the time frame that she's outlined. Bill? Uh, oh, oh, that's that's one one here. oh yeah. okay. It's been the precedent of the water district to appoint someone. There hasn't been a special election for a vacant seat since I've been up here that I know of. That's 35 years. So appointments have been the norm of the day. Yeah. Okay. We did have applications before. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's a special election. Okay, okay Bill. Uh, I, I, I think this is the way to go, but I just I kind of question the rush, and I, would, I, I think I recommend another two weeks. And make the um, the deadline before the agenda goes out. So it would be like uh, May eighth or something, something like that. So, well, know. that affects yeah. uh, committees and it affects the board. And yeah, yeah if somebody's sick, I, just, uh, I think we're I think we're good with I think we're good with the schedule. Response to that as well. If if the board if you don't have the discussion until mid May and then you don't make an appointment at the May, I think it's 16th board meeting, then the opportunity will be lost. So essentially, if you don't request applications by approximately, you know, April 24th or so, you're going to end up having only one meeting at which the board could fill the vacancy by appointment before it reverts to the county to decide, you know, whether to make an appointment. Oh, I thought April 24th was the deadline to get applications in. It's a 60-day process. There's 60 days. So 60 days from, what is it, March 26th? So that's May 25th or 26th, however we count. 
Yeah. And so oh, if I we don't have it appointed yeah. by then, then the county supervisors get... Oh, I didn't know that. And we have yeah. to have them in by the 24th to make the May 2nd agenda. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I, I would rather that yeah. we... We need to move ahead and okay. do this. You know, quorums are important. We don't have a quorum. We could lose a day. Have to call okay, so I, I well anyway. If that's said, I, I, I move that we uh, uh, go with the. Uh, well, well, hang on a sec. Let, are we done with the audience or our ratepayers or whoever you are? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have made all the comments you want to make, okay. I think the first thing we have to do is declare the vacancy. Right. Yes. Yeah, it is a recommendation by motion of the board. I make a motion that the board declares a, a vacancy that we... There's two parts of it. Yeah. There are two parts. So, I would like to... So, Gene, do we need to quote the California Government Code in the motion? No, that's not necessary. Um, I, I'm just seeking a motion finding uh, that a board seat has become vacant as of March 26th, okay. and that you direct staff to proceed with filling the vacancy by appointment and post the notice of vacancy uh, with April 24th as the closing date. Is one, that one, one motion, motion or two motions? Yes, yeah, sorry. Is it two, two motions, motions, isn't it? I'll make a motion. That Either one you. You, you can, can make it all it in one. You, oh. <laughs> At some point, we're going to need to start writing Same motions time. out beforehand. Um, <laughs> so Go ahead, works. Gina, please. Can Gina you want me to provide the language? Yes, please. Uh, okay. Gina. Okay, so the, the language I'm recommending for the motion is that the board finds that an elective office has become va of the board has become vacant as of March 26, 2019 and that you're directing staff to proceed with filling the vacancy by an appointment of the board. Um, <laughs> now, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, let me try again. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I want them written out beforehand. That's okay. It's okay. Finding, <laughs> better you than me. It would be fine. Finding that a board seat has become vacant as of March 26, 2019, and directing staff to proceed with filling the vacancy by board appointment and posting the notice of vacancy with April 24th, 5 p.m. as the closing date and time for the receipt of applications. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that the board acknowledges that uh, the vacancy has been created uh, as of 3-26-2019, um, hereby directing staff to, to go with the appointment process and finally, um, that the position, um, the final date for the position um, applications deadline as of 4 24 um, at 5 p.m. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Director Smallman? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. <laughs> so, item 5C, committee appointments. Yes, this item is put on the agenda, not knowing exactly what the board is going to do moving forward on the vacancy. I'm seeing that the board is moving forward on the vacancy. There may not be a need to change committee appointments at this time, but I wanted to put this as a placeholder on the agenda just in case. So I'll turn it back over to the board for discussion. Well, um, unless we just have one board member on environmental and one board member on uh, on engineering, then so for this month, we, it's for one meeting. It's just for one meeting. We can do that, or just gotta make sure that you keep us informed. If for some reason you can't make that meeting, 
so we can notify the rest of the members so we don't have people showing up. Right, that right. We don't want people showing up when the meeting's going to be canceled. That's happening. I think, I think I mean, it's great you put it on here as a sort of management of foresight. Sure. That's perfect. We call for an election. Perfect. You know, we were, we were having yeah. to do something. I think we can just move on. Does everybody agree with the move on? Question? Public comment? So you're saying you're not going to vote on the recommendation for 5C of combining the engineering and envir environmental thing? Not, not, at not, at this, not at this time. Not at this time. It's, it may happen. Um, I don't think that was... Because... Well, there was a... I didn't hear about possibly combining. Yeah, yeah, it the, was possible that it could happen. Not at this time. Right. But... But so, because a lot of what environmental does, um, the engineer will be doing, uh, but also engineering and environmental is, is hand in hand. You can't do engineering without environmental. I, I think for tonight, let's... But that's not yeah, on the, that's but not I, on I'm the just telling you. Right. On the, uh, uh, right. Right. But just, just real quick, the three committees that uh, Director Bruce was on was the engineering, environmental, and she also was the Santa Margarita groundwater yeah. agency alternate. But I don't know that we can fill that right now without. Yeah. I, I would say we can get by without those being filled for a month. Yeah, the uh, alternate I, didn't come to all the meetings anyway. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Okay, so we'll go to 5D. It's in the winter of 2017, the Lion Water Treatment Plant Storage Tank Access Road site experienced a large landslide that impacted the access road leading up to the Lion Water Treatment Plant Tank Site. Uh, the project is eligible for funding under um, California's severe uh, winter storms flooding the FEMA 4308. The district hired the services of Herrick Kasunich and Associates uh, to prepare a, a, a geotechnical investigation report. The report suggests the property is currently suffering from a deep-seated complex uh, intermittent seasonal landslide uh, with movement in, in the areas. The report recommends stabilizing a, por a portion of the slope using a, a series of uh, pile walls combined with grading to restore the shoulders <coughs> along the access road leading to Lion Tank. Um, along, although the platform supporting the access road would be secured by pile walls, the, the slope and landslide mass will not be stabilized down slope uh, from the retaining walls. The slow moving landslide, which in initially activated in the winter of 2017, has resulted in significant damage to the only access road to the district's land water treatment plant and tank. The water tank, uh, the 3.5 million gallon, is one of our, it is our main water tank, tank for the residents of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. The landslide is located between the uppermost road that provides access to the base of the Lion Tank, which we refer to as the upper road, and the head scarp along Hesse Creek, uh, located about 200 feet downslope to the east, uh, 160 long foot uh, uh, along Madrone Road, uh, we refer to as the lower road. The scope of services that I'm looking for tonight is to review the available geotechnical data um, in the files of the Harrow Kasunich, who has a significant um, environmental and uh, engineering background of that facility, was the original environmental and, and the original geotechnical firm that did the foundations for both the Lion Water Treatment Plant and the uh, Lion Water Storage Tank. Um, we need to have some additional engineering analysis um, and field and laboratory tests need to be performed. We need uh, observations of the sections of the Madrone Road um, so we can see if we can drive large drilling rigs, trucks. This would be a large equipment response that may have issues on the road like we talked earlier that the road may not be able to support. Um, and we need a uh, engineering firm to meet and uh, spe specialized construction engineering contracts to discuss the constructability of the proposed, proposed slope improvements and conditions of Madrone Road leading up to the project site. 
Um, the cost of the geotechnical uh, investigation would be approximately $22,740, and there would be a, an additional $12,800 uh, construction work and time materials of an evaluation working with contractors on putting together the RFP for repair. Um, the repair is estimated at approximately $2 million repair for this project. I was going to just ask you, $2 million. Yeah, it's approximately $2 million repair, which FEMA is on the hook for a minimum, I would say, of 50%. Hopefully, we would make the 75% maximum. Um, this is the only way into the storage facility. And that area has had landslides in the past, and steep topography. We've looked at cutting other roads in. And even if we cut another road in and abandon that access road, we would still have to stabilize the access road as it is upstream on the small stream uh, over several homes below it. We couldn't just let the, the road slide in and, and dam up the creek. So we, we have to stabilize that embankment and we have to restore the road. The road is, is severely damaged now. Those of you who have seen it, uh, it's what, a 16 foot drop. Roughly, the road has dropped uh, down over the last two years. I'm asking the board to uh, approve a contract in the amount of $35,540 to Harold Kasunich and Associates uh, for a geotechnical review and engineering support. <coughs> that all the questions. This line. Here, although the platform supporting the access road would be secured by the Seacamp pile walls, the slope and landslide mass will not be stabilized downslope from the lower Seacamp pile retaining wall. What does that mean exactly? Well, what we've talked about that is there's there's two alternatives they came up with. One was culverting the river, which is probably the plan that will most stabilize the entire hillside. Basically, you put a culvert in and you backfill all around so the material has no place to go. That's what we did earlier back from I think the 79 and 82 type floods. We have a large uh, eight, di eight foot diameter culvert on the lower section of the road and we did just that. So that's one of the alternatives that, they're, that we're gonna narrow down with. But we don't believe that poss possibly the environmental may take, may not make that project constructible. You know, basically you're going into a small stream and culvert and you know, Fish and Wildlife and Army Corps of Engineers is involved. There's a, there's a, a whole host of environmental regulatory agencies. We don't know if they'll allow us to, to continue to culvert that stream. Um, that would be the preferred method because the other walls stuff would still keep creeping and go below and it wouldn't be a final repair. So it may be a combination of the two check walls going up with, with the, the scant walls going up the mountainside and a combination of culverts. That's what still needs to be determined, which one of these two projects are we going to uh, look at our design for. I'm still a little confused, though. If we put in the wall to support the road, then it could still keep sliding. Yeah, that's correct. Um, that that's correct. Doesn't make any sense. Well, that's kind of my sense. thoughts, too. Yeah. But they're looking at uh, what's constructible up there. Can we get equipment up in to put those walls in? It's my understanding that there's drill rigs to put those, these are deep walls no, 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 no. Um, that are going to be very difficult to get up there because of the size of them. I haven't seen them, but they tell me they're horrendous in size. I imagine the, it was easier to do things in 79 and 80 than it is. Right, now. we put a culvert in the back row. Dug it all out, a couple key ways. <laughs> any, any, perm yeah. any permits? Very little. Uh, NCR, triple paper, ripped one off. And, and, and was the outcome any different, do you think? It was you repaired. Would? Yeah. It was repaired. Yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of new regulatory mean, There's not a lot of new, but there's a lot of regulatory agencies that will become involved in this project. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I thought that the, um, the culvert plan, the problem with that was hauling in, you know, you have to haul in too much. For, yeah, that's what they did in the they they one that, But the last time we talked about this, because you said, I guess it was drilled in place, um, you know, retaining walls, like stair staff or, um, or whatever, but they, yeah, they were, how deep was it? I mean, how deep is the slide? Uh, Hero Kucinich just must have found out by now, how deep is this, uh, mm -hmm. the slide, the, you know, below the- 45 to 60. 45 different places. So those piers usually are going to be like 
that'd be 40, 45 plus 40 30 feet. in the gra end of the bedrock. So it'd be the 75 bedrock. foot to So now you're foot. talking like 100 foot piers. Well, after all that first study, what, like what's changed? Why do they need another 35 grand to do It's that? not really not really done to where we can get an RFP. We tried to go out and get an RFP um, for repairs and the contractors who came down to the area, mm -hmm. a lot of them from, uh, from up north, and there were more questions. We didn't have a, a thorough enough report to answer the questions where we could bid out a project. So this $35,000 is going to be... We'll get us an RFP. And our, and get, and get us a four an RFP repairs. stage for... Um, for go in there and, and do repairs. Repairs for proposal. But it'll, you'll, you'll choose either between the culvert or the... Uh, or a combination of the both. Or a combination of the both. Right. And hopefully we'll have multiple projects that will work that we can get out. Okay. And try to get the, the best cost effective. Even so, we have to come up... I like to figure on the conservative side, we'd have to come up with 50% of the team money. Um, just to be conservative, that certain things will be um, not allowed under FEMA. Maybe depends on this, how the scope will work and how we get FEMA out there to write it up to include. Like, there's going to be substantial work on the roadway. There's a couple, uh, a couple of corners coming up off of Highway 236 that's debatable that we can make a truck around. Are we going to have to widen those that are in the county road? But still, if we have to do that, that would mean that uh, we would, it would be on the district's responsibility to do that. Um, we built the tank, we use logging trucks, we use big equipment. Um, you know, hopefully, whatever we pick, it has to be constructible. And those drill rigs supposedly are huge. I've never seen one. I hope the regulatory agencies understand that this 3.5 million gallons serves an okay. enormous number of human beings. Yeah, well, and the, the whole San Lorenzo Valley. Yeah, and, and, and that. And our treatment facility. Let's, let's make sure that. And I just hope that they have some flexibility in light of that. And and then a lot of people want to understand, well, why can't we just move the treatment plant or, or move the no, tank back? Yes. We're, we're stuck there by elevation and by right. where the streams come in and where our ancillary pipelines of all the sources come in. We just can't move that side. Right. Um, the best thing we could hope is for a different access in. The Tech looked around and a lot of it's unstable. There's a lot of water in that ground. It's on the Empire Grade Mountain. Beaches, a lot of water, a lot of springs. There's, there's issues on about, the whole side. How about our tank and uh, treatment plant? Our tank and treatment plant are, are sound. They've been evaluated by, an engine, uh, by the geotech engineers, and at this point in time, there's no movement towards the tanks or the treatment plant. Yes. Hopefully, there's not a 150 foot deep slide under the tank. Yeah. Okay. Any comments from the public here, Ed? Uh, the regulatory agencies on the environmental, you can't talk to them before you have a design? We are talking to them right now. We're they, trying they to get them out there. They won't tell you if you can covert it or not? Uh, well, they're working with us as, of, as we speak. Okay. So I don't, I don't have that answer, but I know that they are contracting, and that's part of what WSC was doing, is getting the, the environmental team, which is another consultant, up and running. Um, to work with the regulatory agencies. Anybody else? Mark? Uh, yeah, the regulatory uh, environmental side, particularly whoops, requiring that they manage drainage, you know, long-term drainage plans below the, the elevation that you're talking about will require uh, not only culverting, but 75 feet down you're going to have to put lines in like they did along Highway 9. Mm -hmm. Okay, where water is actually, uh, that's saturating the soil, will be drained off. But then there's also, you're going to have to put in jute rolls during the construction phase, so you're not actually polluting the, during the construction. But there's an extensive, best there's an extensive process that to be done for construction. Yeah, and so uh, the example is that Highway 9 South of Pelton project, where they put the, the, it's a smaller scale, I realize it, but they put the piers in the ground. They, they actually uh, put in the, the retaining walls and extended out the Highway 9 out uh, over that cliff. And uh, during this latest storm, it worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. The water was pouring out of the culverts, not coming across, and damaging. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a much smaller project, but the same concept applies. I agree. I don't know about the road getting the... the the uh, trucks up there, that's, that's a, 
going to be a little mm -hmm. difficulty. We've got a temporary road in now. For a long time, they were walking yeah. and carrying one gallon chemical containers up. Um, and then we started taking a four wheel drive up. We cut a smaller road. And then once the heavy rain subsided and some of the groundwater dropped, we were able to stabilize just enough to get a, a truck access on. Another technique that they use also is a gun ID. Yeah. The exposed cliff to stabilize it, it can like rock. And so that doesn't move. The, the problem is the underlying way down, 75 feet or 100 feet, uh, has liquefaction. When the water is so totally saturated, it's like a slip slide strike fault. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be contained, right? Yes. That's going to be real difficult. Uh, and, and just one other little comment um, that to date, since the, the slide, uh, we had the slide, the district has spent $118,194 to date. Um, in which uh, close to about 80,000 of that has been to that consultant and the rest of it has been to surveyors, um, district staff on keeping uh, erosion control down on that site. I'll make a motion that we, oops, sorry. Is there, uh, the, anybody else in the audience? Yeah, last question. This is just for the geotechnical coring, right? To get samples, or has that already been done? <coughs> That's <coughs> already done. The drilling's been done. The okay. design. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. All right. I heard a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, the contract to Harrow, Kucinich, and Associates in the amount of $35,540. Second. And may FEMA have mercy on us. Second. Director Smallman? Aye. 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 Did somebody say something? Director Pulse? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Okay. Um, item 5E, letter to press down. Yes, um, I, I do believe uh, Ms. N uh, Council Nichols will take this item. Gina? Yes. Um, so this is the follow-up to closed session during the last meeting. Uh, and of course it's important not to rehash the specific discussions that took place in closed session. But the board did decide to come back in open session to consider um, what was supposed to be a draft letter to press banner addressing some of the complaints and controversies that have been um, in Facebook and the media recently. However, with the resignation of Director Bruce, um, some of the, it, we're concerned that circumstances have changed such that it's, it's not clear what the content of such a letter would be. Uh, so we're coming back to the board for some direction as to whether to proceed with drafting a letter for the board's approval. And if so, you know, what the points would be and who should be involved in that process. Uh, or what uh, does not wish to continue with this effort. Well, we're all speechless. Oh, <laughs> I'm considering. Well, some of that the, Bob's uh, considering. Some of this, you know, obviously, there's a lot about me, and um, you know, I, you know, really, I mean, I, I really. This, this isn't about you. This no, is not, not about well, you. Well, in response to, I, I just wanted, if something does go out, that I am taking this seriously, but just to realize that, you know, I really. You know, I got baited in the discussion about glyphosate, and I, I, I said, I said something really foolish, and, and it should, everybody knows that the one silly w w word was really manipulated against me on this, this whole thing. And that's not what I'm about. This is what not. I am, what I am about, about. Bill, it's not, not about I'm you. Okay. To getting millions, to saving millions of dollars for our water rate payers while improving our water system. 
I'm constantly and generally focused on improving our water district. So let's get back to focusing on those important issues and not, you know, um, do that. But, you know, I mean, I just I, I'm I'm commenting a, until the end of this item until you heard what, yeah. what the yeah. direction yeah. was and, and so forth. It, might it, 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 it has nothing to do with well, I thought it had everything to do with me. It has nothing no. to do with you. No, I, I think the, I think I think the circumstances and and what was said and published are still out there, and I think that that still needs a response of some kind, but maybe different that than what it would have been. I thought because it would come from the city board and not from the board of the city at that time, right? Because that letter was had from the city board, including Director Bruce at the time. And now, you know, I drafted one. I, I got, we, Gene and I have looked at a couple of different versions, and it, it's different now without mm -hmm. Director Bruce here. But I still think something needs to be said. Okay. Um, there were some charges leveled that need to be addressed. In a, in a transparent and, and public way. And um, I think, you know, I think the information that, I, now the information we got from Deb Lowen that's included in here, I don't believe we've seen this before. The, you did not see this before. No. Um, there, was, there was two letters sent and we only received one and I'm mistaken. The first, the letter for the second letter. I see. Um, as the complaint, that wasn't the complaint. And Deb resent that. Miss Lowen sent that. We sent that letter, and we did make that as part of your packet. Yeah. So pretty much, this complaint is. Um, Uh, if you if you look at the pages that there's um, okay Margaret wrote a wrote and posted on social media um, about Director Smallman's post uh, and because. Um, member of the public suggested that he spoke for all of us. She jumped out and said he doesn't speak for her and then she said um, Board President Henry where are you? Uh, I, I can't even read all this. Um, anyway it's been more than 18 hours since um, Mr. Smallman's statement, of why haven't you said anything, and... Um, and I think at that time, certainly speaking for myself, I had no idea it was even going on. I'm not, I'm not and on neither that, did I. I'm not in that neighborhood group. I, 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 I wasn't paying any attention to this, and all of a sudden, you know, we get this uh, sort of um, attack. But she also went along and said that uh, Mr. Smallman, she said Mr. Smallman, um, and, and she went after me saying that we presided over the failed Lompico Water District. Please don't go the same way. Lompico didn't fail. This was a total slur against the community of Lompico about board members who had worked hard to uh, get a merger, we didn't have enough water, bottom line. And yeah, we had problems, but we were paying our bills, we were fixing things, we re redid our Lewis treatment plant. We did a lot of stuff that we needed to do, and we came to this district with money, Plus, everybody's paying $600 more every year 
to SLV to fix things that SLV wanted fixed. And not only that, they get property tax from us. Not only the assessment money, but they get property tax from us, which they don't get from Felton or anybody else, because Lompico was a special district. And that meant property tax for SLB. So that, that was part, that, that was just um, a little much that she went after us because we didn't, we did the right thing. We had a public meeting. That's what we were supposed to do. We had a public meeting. We didn't go out and hash this out on next door. And this is basically what the complaint was about, was her post. And, and just a couple other things. Um, you know, part of this was debated extensively during the campaign recently, and I think the voters made it clear where they came down on that. And with respect to the condition of the Lompico Water District, when all this repair work is done, will it be in adequate shape relative to the rest of the district in, in terms of how the facilities are? Yes. Yeah, and so I mean, I I don't understand where all this well all this uh, antipathy toward a valued community in our district is coming from. So I think these things need to be uh, need to be discussed. I don't know the best way of being able to do that, but at this point, given that there was going to be a um, sort of letter going out, is there a way for us to be able to work on a different letter? Yes. Um, and I think we should do that. I, I guess one of the big questions Gina and I had is, do you still want a letter? Yes. And if you still want a letter, we, we, would, we would remove certain parts of it that was decided in closed session and we just change it. Okay. Change it around and address those points. Okay. Would be my recommendation, if, okay. if you still want a letter. But I, we weren't sure if the loss of a directory would end this or not. Uh, well, I agree with Bob and Lois. I, I do think that we still need to have a letter that goes to the press banner and explains or refutes uh, the, the comments that uh, former director Bruce made. And it doesn't need to be uh, with the same sort of spirit as uh, I think the current letter that you guys put together was going to address, but clearly one that sticks up for the current board members and, uh, and, and clearly explains our disagreement with uh, the Bruce's comments and uh, the fact that we were hamstrung from saying anything anyway without violating the Brown Act, even if we wanted to. And I, I think it's clear that it behooves us all to make sure that the audience of the press banner that reads that stuff actually understands where the, the, uh, the, the current board sits with respect to their feelings on the topic that was the, the gist of the discussion. So, yeah, I agree with Bob Hamill. It's a letter just need to go. And, and that certainly should be rewritten uh, or in a different spirit than what you guys want to put together so far. Bill? I think the letter's a great idea, and I think it should, um, I'm not sure on the specificity of what the letter should entail, but I, I think the board should commit to a conscious effort of not, you know, aside from the things that I did on social media and, the, and then what, what uh, Director Bruce said, that we are making a conscious effort to not engage in that activity anymore. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to go into more detail about this the Long Pico stuff, but um, I, I, just think, I think in general, that's a really good idea that we have a, a letter. Um, we were addressing Long Pico. Yeah, when they they asked to the think, district. I think you should mention something about in or, or whatever. I mean, I just found it shocking during the the campaign that there was I, this, this I kind of yes, I didn't even, so, re, I didn't even, I haven't even reread it. Yes, it was just amazing. But um, yeah, so I think uh, now we still want to hear from the public, obviously. But yeah. I, I think um, do we, will we need a motion, Gina, on that, or just direction? No, no motion is needed. Just direction, and it, it would be helpful if, in addition to the content that you've suggested so far, 
you could suggest which one or two directors we could consult with in the process of creating the draft. Before it was Mr. Fultz and Ms. Henry, I believe. Actually, former Director Bruce was the only one. Yeah, she was going to. So that's true. That won't work. So we'll need to slide somebody else in. I'd be I'd be happy to volunteer okay. for it. So I I I don't know if Steve wants to volunteer or if it should be me. Yeah, I'll be glad to uh, help. Okay, I'll back. Consult with me. I'll be glad to contribute. I will withdraw okay. that and let Steve do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. okay. All righty. And um, how about the public? Do you have something you want to say, Tony? Well. I, I have to say, I, as you know, at the at the candidate debate, I was appalled at what um, John, Hayes. John Hayes said, and um, I think most of the people there were appalled. And and the other thing is, none of it was true. It was just absolutely not true. And I confronted him after the meeting, and I said, you know, this isn't true, John. Everything you said, you know very well. And he told me, well, Tony, all's fair in love, in love and politics. And, and you know, so what? It, so is that where we are now in this world after the, the Trump candidacy? Is that where we're going? I don't think so. And, and I would like, um, I would absolutely like you to address the, the Lob Pico part. And I was upset um, that, that it was even brought up again. It needs to be it needs to be brought up in your letter, and, and we need pe people don't know. They need to be made aware that not only that, that Lois Henry saved Long Pico, but they, she saved our water board. She's, she knew about bookkeeping. She went into a mess at the time, cleaned it all up, and she, she discovered all kinds of craziness that was going on and corrected it, and, and, and when we, she worked hard to merge, she worked hard to get us into the black, and, and so it was just appalling, the, those statements, and they have to stop. And Lompico, personally, I'm thrilled that we're part of San Lorenzo Valley, and I enjoy now, come, even though I don't like the drive, I love meeting the, the rest of San Lorenzo Valley. I feel like we were always kind of excluded probably because we wanted to be, but now we're no longer. And I enjoy, and I know other people too, enjoy being part of San Lorenzo Valley. Thank you. And we love having you. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else? Debbie? Yeah. I actually wrote, wrote some stuff down. I don't usually. But there's a, a lot of things I wanted to cover. This is not about Bill Smallman. And this is not about an emotional issue, and I have no intention of talking about Margaret Bruce the way that many people, including former board members, <coughs> talked about Bill Smallman when the same issue came up about respectful workplace policy. <coughs> I appreciate the board wanting to uphold the district's commitment to sustaining a welcoming and inclusive public service environment, and I'm glad for the change. I worked hard for this campaign. The campaign was based on civility. These are not the only incidents that I bring up in this, my letter of complaint. We are moving from a toxic board and management to one of civility and openness. There are a lot of people have been coming up to me and, and telling me their own stories. And I really don't want to go into it, but there is one in particular that was in April of 2018, I believe it was about glyphosate. And it was at the Felton Hall, where Margaret Bruce totally inappropriately treated a member of the public very poorly. That member of the public was on the Environmental Committee and making very strong points. And the, everyone in that room was opposed to the use of glyphosate. And yet, Rick Moran was picked on publicly and never received an apology, and I think that's long past due. But he won't be getting it, and neither will I, because Margaret Bruce has resigned. So I'm glad that the district's going to be able to move on. Um, this is not about anyone's First Amendment rights. Elected officials are always under the public eye, and we need to know that. And we have an expectation of higher behavior. 
Now, I was perfectly willing to talk to Bill about his behavior, and we're friends. And I was very clear about, this is not acceptable. But I'm not imagining that many of Margaret's friends told her that what her, she was doing online and sending letters to the paper was not acceptable. And that's the difference between this board and the last. What we have are three big issues. I had expected this to be taken care of really pretty simply, and I was out of town for a while, and I thought it would all be taken care of by the time I got back, because this is really something that the board and the councilor should have handled. Um, we have three violations here. We had a, a potential violation of the Brown Act and the open meeting law, where discussions were, she was baiting other board members to make a discussion and, and out of the, um, having a posted meeting. She clearly did not understand the Brown Act or she felt that it, she was exempt from it. Uh, this is a violation of the board manual that was just adopted in January this year, which defines acceptable board behavior and is a violation of the third thing, respectful workplace policy, was also just adopted by this board December 2018. It describes actions and consequences of complaints and violations. That is the only thing that is under discussion here. What, if anything, the board intends to do to assure the public that you take all of the above policies and laws seriously, whether it's a letter of misconduct, a letter to the public saying that you do withhold, that you do understand and want to withhold the Brown Act and the respectful workplace policy, and you want to follow the board manual. And it also, as was brought up, does Margaret Bruce speak for the rest of the board? I think you need to be very clear, since she is the one that inferred that not speaking up means that you agreed. The board manual has a code of ethics and conduct. Um, just some excerpts from it. The board is committed to providing excellence and legislative leadership that results in providing highest quality services to constituents. They're expected to maintain the highest ethical standards to follow district policies and regulations. Again, this was not done. And to abide by all applicable local, state, and federal laws. Directors should, item E, directors should commit themselves to emphasizing the positive, not done. Commit themselves to focusing on issues and not personalities, not done. They have the right to disagree with ideas and opinions, but without being disagreeable. Once the board takes an action, directors have to support the action and not create barriers. We've seen this in the glyphosate issue. Uh, the work of the district is a team effort. Doing things like what Margaret did in posting and dividing this community is not a teamwork. Directors should be courteous, responding to individuals in a positive manner. Directors should... I really request being able to finish this. Go ahead. You, are, you should function as a part of the whole, and issues should be brought to the attention of the entire board, not one board of director going out on their own. That's in the board manual not followed. Members' interaction with the public, press, and other entities must recognize the limit of any board member to speak for the board. They do not. They cannot. It is in the board manual. The Respectful Workplace Policy says, San Lorenzo Valley is committed to creating and sustaining a professional and respectful work and public services environment one which promotes and maintains an environment free from offensive or degrading remarks or conduct. And it lists four specific areas. One is violence, which is physical force, harassment, or intimidation. The second is discriminatory against like race, color, creed, national origin, origin or religion. Um, third is disruptive and disrespectful. Any behavior in the form of hostile or unwanted conduct. Behavior that disrupts civility and cooperation, rudeness, angry outbursts, non-constructive criticism intended to intimidate or undermine confidence. Fourth is sexual harassment. So when I have brought respectful workplace policy things to another board in the past, and it's kind of getting the feeling when I brought it to this board, you were only addressing number three, or number two, discriminatory behavior. It is not an anti-discrimination policy. It is a respectful workplace policy. So number three, disruptive and disrespectful behavior is what I'm bringing to your attention. And I expect something to be done. Um, 
Under the regulation, I was required to respectfully ask the person to stop their behavior. A lot of people have done that. And I was re required to report within 10 days if it didn't stop. And I was sure that it would be investigated and followed up. And I would expect to have something followed up, not just drop it because Margaret Bruce resigned. I think that by doing nothing, it is an uneven application of all the district policies that you have in place. And I understand that uh, Gina Nichols is now working on a social media policy, and that will be really important to include as we go forward. Um, I believe that the ill will created by the past board and, in, and promulgated by Margaret Bruce as with Tony, I think it has resulted in the mismanagement of the Long Pico merger terms. We've been overcharged. The assessment district was once, cons the funds were once considered fat. Two managers, the last two managers, for instance, thought that the, the cost for replacing the tanks was just fat. I think one of them called it puffed up. It was more than enough money. Today, it's what? It's a third of what's needed? These projects were supposed to be done within five years. This has been mismanaged, and now it's costing everybody. And, it, and the reputation of Lompico is being burnished on this because now there's not enough money in the assessment. We are going to be paying this money for 10 years, and probably not all our projects are going to be done. And that, this is a real problem and a question. And as Tony and I are on the uh, Lompico Oversight Committee, we're the ones that are going to have to now explain to our neighbors why all this money we're putting out is not going to be enough. And it comes down to the attitude that has been promulgated in this district in the past, and I think it needs to be addressed and it needs to be over. And this is the last time I hope we ever have to talk about it. I appreciate the board's actions, anything you want to choose to do tonight, and Gina Nichols, anything that you can uh, suggest legally. And to make this a real um, a message to everyone, where you stand, and this is all about rebuilding public trust, especially in Lompico. Thank you. Uh, Virgil? Uh, yes, I was just curious, um, what, what is the process now that there will be a, um, a letter drafted, and will it be presented at an, at an open board meeting for board approval before submission? Is that the general idea? Okay. Yeah, that's yes. correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to reading it. Um, never mind. <laughs> you don't need my advice. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I have just kind of come into this recently and have no idea what happened with Juan Pico. Um, and I, I didn't really know the previous board, but I'm wondering, Debbie, it just seems like you're very critical of them and, and putting them down now, if, if that is very helpful also. I mean, I, Is this I, a point of order? Uh, yes. Yeah, Debbie can't answer you. No, but, I you can go, but you can I, talk. I guess, you know, I, I hope that your letter doesn't uh, criticize the previous board. It doesn't seem helpful to me. And, uh, you know, I haven't been to any of those board meetings, I don't know, but it just seems like it will continue the, whatever animosity I'm seeing right now. I, I don't know that the letter will criticize the previous board. It isn't about the previous board. Okay, I think we've got some direction for... We do. Yeah. One report from clarification, I apologize, it's a little hard to follow all the back and forth over the phone, but was it um, Director Swan and Director Henry yes. who we're going to be consulting with? Yes. No. Yes. No, it's both no, no, Swan. No, 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 Swan and Henry. Swan, so Steve, Steve volunteered to do it, and I, I'm fine. fine. But I, I didn't say I wanted to do it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Swan and Okay, so we're back to, that's a good question. I thought it was Swan and Steve. Well, Swan and Steve, just to clarify, you're going to come up with a draft. So, so the next. I don't want to be. Okay, Steve, it'll be you and I then, because Lois would like to um, not. So that'll be fine. Okay, okay thank you. Glad to do it, Bob. If you don't want to get involved, I'll be glad to do the whole thing with the 
Jr. Oh, okay. Well, that's. I'll just take a look at it at the end. No problem. That's great. What What did he just say? Steve said he'd take it on with Gina. Oh, Steve would just do it all. He'd just do it all. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I am looking for. But the, the draft will be available for. Well, yeah, right. it's going to come next back. Week and next yeah. week, next week, next week. You sure you want to do that, Steve? <laughs> yeah, it's good. All by yeah. yourself? <laughs> well, you can work with Gina, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you that. I'll send you that six pack later, Steve. <laughs> After. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So that's resolved. And anybody else in the audience know? Okay. All right. I, if there's, uh, there's um, some informational material, but I think you already know about it. So, is everybody ready to adjourn? Yes. It is five after nine. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.